What's up, everybody? It's Ace. I am fired up for tonight. Uh, I'm much more fired up that baseball starts tomorrow than game night, but I hope you guys are fired up for both. I spent a good chunk of my afternoon prepping for game night. I got to find a way to make this a, an easier prep so we can do it more often. Uh, give me a second here. I'm going to uh, start to log your... I can't find my master sheet that we used for trivia night. So I, I need to type in your so rare names and uh, in the spreadsheets. So in the meantime, there we go. So hope you guys are having a great day. I did set everything up. Just need, just need these. Let's go. So for those of you who got in here early, really do appreciate uh, you jumping in. Normally I'd say, hey, let's give everybody a few minutes to get in, but and maybe we will, but because I'm going to have to log all these names, it's going to take me a minute. Thanks, Nano. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Bradley, welcome in. Uh, to, to, to Magnum. Oh, yeah, man. Great to have you in here. It's always nice when the name's the same. Uh, so rare Southpaw. Oh, what's up, Jake? Good to see you. You know, I'm really hoping we can we can talk a little baseball, talk a little so rare on the eve here. Obviously, we've got a lot of stuff uh, from a from a game night perspective that, that I want to jump into, but um, pop up. Got it. Um, but it's going to take a minute. We got uh, Jake squared in here. Two Jakes. Jake Kalos, Jake Tweedy. I did extend an invite to some of the so rare guys. Didn't expect them to stay in the whole time, but I, I did say, hey, you know, just pop in for a minute, say hi. I think everybody'd like that. Flores, good to see you, man. It's my dude. Definitely butchered your first name. Flores, super rare. Love it. Chacorta. Good to see you. Uh, Chacorta, you are going to need to message me on Twitter because uh, I always identify your uh, your PFP, but I'm just curious what it is, where it came from. Athers, what's up, man? Good to see you. Rabiosa. Uh, I think you're new. Awesome. Welcome in. Great to see you. Um, C-Y-N-W-R-I-G. By the way, if you missed it earlier, I know Hunter and the gang uh, did a really cool like round table. And I was like, Hunter, how'd you do that? Um, and he told me that this website, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, and I, I just did not have enough time. I had really large ambitions for tonight and being able to like do the trivia. And I actually have a buddy. He's a former major leaguer. He does Sirius XM now. And he used to do trivia night all the time. And I was like, oh man, I got to get him in here. Uh, and a couple other guys, I was like, oh, this would be great. One, one of my buddies works for the Indians. Another one works for the Orioles. And I'm like, I just ran out of time and I, I feel so bad. So I'm hoping that at some point during the season, it's probably going to be tough to get my my guys in who work for MLB, uh, work for an MLB team. But I'm going to try to at some point during the season if we're, we're able to do some more of these. But I I was really hoping it'd be great to, to get them in here and, and get their perspective on, on things and let you guys kind of pepper them with questions. Lance, good to see you. Welcome in. Yeah, Taylor, you got to defend your crown. I haven't seen Tyler in here yet. Uh, Samuel, Samuel, the sniper, 
sniper. Pew, pew. Back in those NFT days, sniping stuff. Um, Samuel, you're going to have to drop me your, um, your so rare name. William, great to see you, man. Appreciate you. Hope the packing is going all right. Hope you're excited. Looking forward to what's going on. Uh, getting some sun. I'm going to be in California this weekend. <laughs> it does not look like there's going to be a lot of sun. That's okay. It's it's my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. They made it. Uh, pretty excited for them. Uh, so I got to go out for that. And um, it's going to take away from my baseball viewing. But, I mean, how many, how many opportunities are we going to have to celebrate 50, right? Hey, Eagle. Always a pleasure. Eagle just comes in here to be a team player and crack jokes, which I can appreciate. St Taylor, uh, StreamYard, thank you. Sam the Sniper. Is that uh, Snipey, no Snipey? Uh, ba -ba 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 -bum. Parent anniversary also. Awesome, Taylor. Okay, so I think we've got 20 people in here and definitely not 20 names. So that's okay. But if uh, I, some of you are more than welcome to just watch and kind of see how it goes, figure we'll give a few minutes here. I did want to give uh, Hunter and the crew a shout out. And I know Chef was on there. Uh, Jump Shoot, Heimer, Mitch. I think that was the crew that was on there. And I'm sure that it's available on... So Hunter's not in here yet, or he could plug it. Um, but if you guys do get a chance, it was it was interesting. It's good to hear people's perspective. Obviously, everybody plays at like different levels. And um, I have, I, I think I finished my lineups a couple days ago, except for my, well, I, I guess I did finish my, my super rare lineup. I'm, I'm still tweaking. I'm going after Nolan Gorman tonight. If I can pick him up at a reasonable price, I'm just not interested in overpaying for anybody right now. But if I can pick him up at a reasonable price, reasonable price at 11:30 at night, then I will insert him over Bo Bichette and have a little trickle down. But otherwise, my my limited champ, my rare champ, we're ready to go. The odds are looking good for us. If we have a respectable lineup right now, heading into uh, game week one, there's a good chance you're going to win a little cash, win a little cash back. And if you got a great lineup heading into week one. There's a good chance you'll start to cut into that uh, that deficit that you dug for yourself. Uh, I should say that we've all dug for ourselves. Uh, da, 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 TB, uh, I'll join my show rare, my chicken. Oh, oh, I know who you are, TB. Awesome. Thanks for coming in. Chicken on a baseball. Sweet. Uh I would not suggest a Cardinal stack, Samuel. I, I do like the Cardinals, but I'm just not uh, I'm not as hyped on on Goldie and Arenado as they're getting older. I really like Newbar, but he can't stay healthy, and I like Gorman. So, by the way, I have tried to get like four other middle infielders, and it hasn't worked for me, which is why I am now on Gorman. So it's not like he's my top target. It's just that it's the last day. <laughs> so by process of elimination, he is the last girl in my phone to call to see if they want to go to prom. Um, so that that's why Norman is, or um, Nolan Gorman is, is now on the radar. Um, I, I do think everybody is expecting the Dodgers to be a massive stack. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Dave Roberts benches some guys gives guys rest already because that's kind of his MO. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Built a limited team around Wander last year. Ooh, pain. Big time pain. Um, all right. What do you say we kick this off? You guys ready? Um, if Okay, a couple things. I guess you're supposed to, like, pound the like button, right? We've only got nine likes so far, so let's knock that out. Um, and... We've got these emoji things. I don't know if you guys have seen those. So try those things out. Let's make sure everything is working. And then I'm going to try not to screw this up. I'll do my best. So we're going to do 
Uh, it's like reverse guess who. It's not really reverse guess who. Oh, I do need to warn everybody. Uh, my landscaper is going to show up any minute, and I'm hoping that it's not too loud. I do have double pane windows, but what are you going to do? So we'll, we'll just kind of have to work around that. Um, I did let him know that I was like, hey, five o'clock, I'm on a call. Tried to get him to come earlier, and it, it didn't work, obviously. So either he's going to skip my house, or he'll be here, and we'll just have to hear about it. Okay, there you go. You guys are doing a decent job. Pound that like button. Let's get those things going. If you're on social, feel free to be like, hey, Ace got started. Let's jump in and uh, let, let's get it on. Let me try not to screw this up. Okay, here we go. Here are the rules. There's going to be four rounds. One, two, three, four rounds. You are only allowed to answer once per question. Something just happened. I'm not going to talk about it, uh, but you're only allowed to answer once per question, okay? Because what's going to happen is, let me let me give you an example here. So, up oh, there's a landscaper right right on cue, right? So I'll say, just for example, uh, that this person is a left-handed hitter. He is from Cuba. He has won an American League Championship Series MVP. He was also Rookie of the Year. Anybody? Ah, uh, there you go, Taylor. All right, so that's that's how it's going to work. Except you're going to see the clues on the screen. But yeah, it's it's Jordan Alvarez. Um, the first round, actually, the first three rounds, I'm going to hit the button, and the the clues are going to come nice and slow. Last round, it's going to be chaos. It's going to be all five clues at one time. Some of these are going to be pretty easy. Some of them, there might be a few that just don't get answered, and that's okay too. And then what I'm going to have to do is. First three people who answer correctly are going to get a point for first round, two points for the second round, three points for the third round, and then the equalizer, four points for the fourth round. Uh, I've got, I think, six limited cards I, I bought to give away and a Shohai Otani hat. How about that? There you go. Um, if you'd prefer... Uh, you're more than welcome to get an aced out cap, but I've got a show high Otani cap for everybody. Okay, let's do it. Here we go. Made his major league debut at the age of 19. Get your Google ready. Made his major league debut at the age of 19. Played on Team USA. I like that you guys are trying to get out ahead of everybody. Remember, you only get one answer. Has only played for one team his entire career. American League Rookie of the Year. Where's 27? There we go. Now you guys got it. That's right. Mike Trout. Trouty Trout Trout. So I had Chorta. No, no, no. Chacorta. Sorry about that. Chacorta, Athers, and Jake Kalos, a.k.a. So Rare Southpaw. You guys were the first three that came through on my end, which unfortunately... Uh, if it looked like you were in the top three and you weren't, that's just not the way it works. Um, but yeah, Mike Trout, congratulations, everybody who got that right. Uh, by the way, there's nothing wrong with guessing early because, you know, once I hit a certain clue, the majority of the people are going to jump on. Um, so if you want to be in the top three, that is the way to go. Do, 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 do. Let's hit the next one. I thought you guys did pretty well for that. 
All right. Was committed to Cal State Fullerton when drafted in 2007. And you'll notice the clues start a little obscure and then they get easier as we go along. He's got three seasons with double-digit stolen bases. Three seasons, almost a Titan. Finished second in the rookie of the year voting to Craig Kimbrell. He's a Mickey Mouse MVP. Where's number five? Get that Google working. I actually thought this was going to be easier. There you go. Now you guys got it. All right, Athers on the spot again. Sam and the Sniper sneaking in there. And K-Lamp in spirit. Yeah, Freddie Freeman is the correct answer. He was the 2020 MVP, which uh, affectionately is referred to as the Mickey Mouse season uh, since it was only 60 games. Okay, now this one I'm going to warn you is, is probably the hardest question. When I was doing my proofing, I thought there's just no way anybody's going to get this. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, favorite video game is FIFA. He's a soccer fan. Hails from Venezuela. That's probably the best clue of the bunch. Has never won a gold glove or a silver slugger. So if you're looking up Venezuelan baseball players, there's probably a guy that stands out above everybody, and he has definitely won a silver slugger. So it's not him. His middle name is Roger. I see you guys saying Altuve. Altuve has won a silver slugger. He wears number 25. He's from Venezuela. His middle name is Roger. He wears number 25. I know a lot of you guys are waiting right now. You're trying to look on Google furiously. Let's give it a few more seconds. And there it is, Taylor. It is Anthony Santander. Yeah, I told you guys that was going to be the hard one. Taylor, I think you beat the, you beat the buzzer on that. And uh, Flores, I, I think you were in there too. Okay, don't worry. That was the hard one. They are going to get, uh, they're, they're more like the first one from here on out. Okay. MLB the show cover boy. So that really narrows things down here. If you want to place your guess right now and try to get ahead of everybody, Here's your shot. Not this year. Not this year, though. He's a former MLB The Show cover boy. So it's not Vladdy. Okay, everybody wants to wait. Okay. His mother played for the Bohemian National Softball Team. Fun fact. Okay, I guess that was the one that gave it away, right? 2022 All-Star, converted center fielder. Where's number two? That's right. It is uh, it's Jazz Chisholm. All right, what do we got here? Athers again. Athers, you are on fire. Working hard for that Seth Lugo limited. Uh, Jake. There you go, Jake. Got another one. Nice work. And who was the third one on mine? Magnum. Magnum, I got you as third nano. You were so close. Uh, favorite music is pop. 
Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Hey, Rob. Uh, Rob, I do not actually have you in here yet. So feel free. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry. William, did I miss you? No, William, you were second. How did I miss that? Um, yeah, Athers first, William second, Magnum third. Had to go to the judges on that, right? So who is that Jake got out? Yeah, sorry, Jake. Close. Okay, cool. Let's uh let's move on to the next one. Cal State Fullerton alumni. Here we go. We got another Titan in here. Four-time gold glove winner. Was traded north of the border. Not this season. Just in his career, was traded north of the border. Returns to the Bay Area in 2024. Oh, now everybody knows it, right? That's right. It's Chappie, Matt Chapman. Once, uh, once it rains, it pours, right? Okay, I've got Magnum, uh, Chacorta, and Jake. Nice. All right. Hey, what's up, Jump Shoot? Good to see you, man. Um, okay, that's going to conclude round one. How you guys feeling about this? You guys digging this so far? I could tell you, I could do this so much quicker if I didn't have to prep the PowerPoint. So, <laughs> so on my on my screen, I've got Magnum, Chacorta, Jake Kalos, William, Athers, Samuel. That's the that's the order of the race. Okay, hopefully my uh, my landscaper is not like blaring right now. Okay, let's go. So round two. Round two, fresh meat. These are young players. Uh, I was trying to go rookies, but I felt like it was going to be a little too hard. So they're like rookie-ish kind of guys. This guy's a first round pick, was selected 26th overall. Born in Seattle. His favorite movie is Bull Durham. He is a National League Rookie of the Year, and it looks like everybody's everybody's got it now. Where's number seven? That's right. It is John from So Rare, Corbin Carroll. John's doppelganger. Okay, so let's see who I've got here. I've got Jake. Now, remember, these are two points. So I've got Jake Nano on the board. Jake Nano Magnum. That is the order I've got these in. Athers, Taylor, Samuel, I had you guys right after. Okay, ready? He was a first round pick, selected second overall. He attended Notre Dame High School. He plays in the NL Central. Born in Los Angeles. I guess this one actually is a little rough. And he wears number 21. And he wears number 21. I see all of your wrong answers. Where is Matt McLean even from? Oh, 
Uh, Matt McLean's from Irvine. Close. If you're not from California, you probably seem like they're the same. Answer is, there it is. Hunter Green. Hunter Green. Um, I'm trying to check on Matt McLean here. Uh, Matt McLean was selected twice. In 2018 out of high school, he was the 25th overall pick. And in 2021, he was the 17th overall pick. I really hope that's not as loud in my in your ears as it is mine. Okay, so who do we got? Uh, somebody was really quick on it. Lance. Lance, you killed that. You were the man on that. And everybody went McLean. He went Hunter Green. Uh, then I've got Magnum. And Jake. Oh, I'm sorry, Athers. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. We'll just, uh, we got to weather the storm here. All right, next guy up. He was a second overall, or I'm sorry, not a second, a second round pick, 50th overall. Born in Tennessee. Next clue is going to give it away. Has only played 23 major league games. No guesses, huh? Won a World Series as a rookie. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you guys got it. It is Evan Carter. Nice work. Lance, you are on fire. You know these young guys. All right, I got Flores second. And, Will, I got you third. Everybody gets two points. Okay, here we go. This guy is a first overall pick. Overall, first, he's a 1-1. One, one. First round, first pick. He's a 1-1. One, one. He's a Sun Devil. Not yet. He's the only one one that's a Sun Devil. Sun Devil, I believe. His high school also produced uh, Johnny Holmes and Anthony Bender. I know that's a good one. Torque bomb. Hmm. Looks like, looks like we might have one, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. We got enough. We got Lance again on fire. Yes, it is Spencer Torkelson. Let's see. We got Lance in first. I appreciate the, uh, the Adley guesses. Adley is a beaver. He's not a sun devil. Uh, Edward. There you are. Pop, pop. And Magnum. Nice job, guys. All right, one more question, and I'll give a score update. That's right. I know a lot of people are pretty hyped about uh, Torque heading into this season, too. Okay. All right, this guy plays in the National League West. I'm just trying to narrow it down a little bit for you. He was a third round pick. He's a top shelf lefty. Athers, it was worth a guess, right? No, but this guy's a lefty. Top shelf lefty, plays in the NL West, third round pick. He calls Oracle home. Yeah, no risk it, no biscuit, right, Athers? I mean, where's number 45? It looks like we have enough. 
That's right. It is Kyle Harrison. Nice job, guys. Let's see who was Ruben. Nice job, Ruben. Um, Ruben, I don't even have you on the board. So when you get a chance, I'm going to need your so rare manager name to add you to the scoreboard here. Um, Ruben with Kyle, Taylor with Kyle. Ruben, I got you the first time. We're good. Two points. Ruben's on the board. I saw Taylor on the board. And who was my last Harrison? Sniper. Sam the Sniper. Pew, pew. All right. Jake Tweedy, so close, man. What? Who is it? Yeah, Rube. I thought I had Rube. No? Yeah, I got, I got Ruben. Thanks, Taylor. I got him. He was number one. He was on it. So let's see. Right now we've got uh, Magnum with eight points. Uh, so Rare Southpaw with six. Lance with six. And everybody else. Three or less right now. Oh, his manager name. <laughs> Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Athers. Appreciate it. Got it. Okay. So uh, next section, we're going to go, we're going to, uh, we're going to move into the old timers. So these are guys who are in the hall of fame, very popular, famous. So for those of you who, who are, are baseball fans and have been baseball fans a long time, these are probably going to be fairly easy for those of you who are new to baseball because you play so rare, these are probably going to be really hard. This player played his entire career in the National League West. He is also a member of the 3000 Hit Club. He was a point guard at San Diego State. 15-time all-star. And he wore number 19. That's right. You guys got it. It is Tony Gwynn, Mr. Padre. Nice work on that. Remember, all these are worth three points. All right. So Nano, nice job. Three points. That's a huge impact. Taylor. And... Got Nano, I've got Taylor, I've got Jake Kalos. Bear with me here, real quick. I'm going to alphabetize this list because it's just going to make it that much easier to find you guys. Because I'm tracking it all on a so rare, on a show or on an uh, Excel spreadsheet. Mm. There we go. Okay. That'll just make it a little easier for me. Okay. So Tony Gwynn, good job, guys. Remember, they're all very famous baseball Hall of Famers. This ball player played on nine different major league teams. He is also a member of the 3000 Hit Club. He was caught stealing a record 335 times. He is a 10-time All-Star. And he's the stolen base king. There you guys go. Adrian Beltre. Interesting. I thought Adrian Beltre just played for two teams. I might have to double-check that. But, yes, it is Ricky. So, in honor of Kika, I had to throw Ricky Henderson in there. So let's see, I got Will first. He was the first one on Ricky. Ricky knows Ricky. Taylor? I'm surprised uh, Tyler's not in here. It's hard to have Taylor without Tyler. And then Magnum. Three points for you guys. Nano, you were so close. 
Athers, mm -hmm. Tweety, I see you guys. At least four. You guys are gonna make me look up Beltray, aren't you? I just remember him with the Dodgers and the and the Rangers. Not to say he couldn't have played elsewhere, just I just don't remember it. Oh, the Mariners, that's right. Those were some dark years, huh? And then he played for Boston for a hot second. Four teams. Four teams. Will. You got it, man. Yeah, four. I totally forgot about those Mariners years. Okay, let's move on. Next guy. Mm -mm. This Hall of Famer was a World Series MVP. Yeah, extra credit, Will, for sure. Uh, his 3,000th hit was a home run. He led the league in hits twice. He's a 14-time All-Star. And he wore number two. Let's see. One, two, three. There it is. That's right. It's a captain. It is Derek. Derek Jada. Jada. So fun. Uh, I don't know if I can call it fun fact. Um, back in the day when I used to do radio, uh, I was actually doing a remote while uh, while the Yankees were playing and we were waiting to see if Jeter was going to hit us, uh, get his 3,000th hit. Uh, so we couldn't listen to it. We couldn't see it. We had to follow it like on the MLB.com live app. And um, and that's how we found out he hit his 3,000th. He got his 3,000th hit and it was a home run. And it was pretty cool because we were at a, at a big remote at this thing called On Back uh, in San Diego, which is on the beach. And there's probably... I don't know, 50, 100 people around. So when he got the hit and then we got to like play the sound, it was really cool. So I will always remember that Derek Jeter's 3,000th hit was a home run because of that. Uh, ba -ba 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 -bum. Taylor, Taylor, you are uh, three for three in this round. That's huge. And Lance. Lance is back. Who's in first? Magnum is in first with 14. Taylor has uh, jumped up. And is in second with 12. All right, we've got two more Hall of Famers, two more old timers. And then things are going to get wild in the flash round. Okay, this Hall of Famer played in Canada and in the United States. He is also an MVP and a home run derby champion. So we're just going to shave a bunch of names off the list right now. He won an MVP, and he's also a home run derby champion. The next clue is going to give it away. His son plays in the majors currently. Yep, nine-time All-Star, War 27. That's right, Vladdy is your daddy, Vladimir Guerrero. I was uh, I was at his Hall of Fame induction, which is pretty cool. I was actually there for Trevor Hoffman uh, being a, a Padre homer, but uh, and it was a massive class. It was like Vladdy, Chipper, Tommy, uh, Hoffy, and one other guy. Gosh, I can't remember. But I mean, most of the time, Hall of Fame classes are like one or two people, um, or nobody. But that year it was pretty, it was pretty big. Um, okay, Jake, Jake, I've got you finishing first there. That's Jake Kalos finishing first. I've got Taylor four for four. I feel like you took like a, a baseball history class at Miami, and uh, Eagle was third. 
Ruben, you were so close. Nano right there. Edward, Chloe, you, I mean, you guys were you guys were there. All right. Yeah, nobody hitting uh, bad pitches, nobody better hitting bad pitches for home runs than, than Vladimir Guerrero Sr. Okay, last old timer before things get wild. This player not only played in uh, played for teams in the U.S. and Canada, but he was a pitcher. So he pitched in both countries, pitched for the home team in both countries. Not a trick question. He played on six major league teams. He is a five-time Cy Young winner. Birds fear him. What do we have? One, two. We got, we got two. William. Okay, let's go. Three, four, five. No, seven, eight. Now everybody's got it, right? Uh, yeah, it is Randy Johnson, the big unit. I had the big unit in there, but I felt like that was just going to be far too obvious. Far too obvious. Here, wait, wait, here we go. Um, Roy Holiday was was a, an interesting answer. That's a good answer. Hmm. Chipper. Okay, so Lance, I got, I, I guess I just added a random guy into that group, but it was just those four. All right, nice job, Athers. Oh, you were due to get on the board again. It's been a minute. Uh, Nano on the board. And I think, Will, you were third. Is that right? Randy. Randy is dandy. Okay, so we're heading into the last round. Uh, Benjamin. Hey, welcome in, man. Uh, by the way, if you guys haven't yet, I think you have. But if you haven't yet, pound that like button. Um, this is going to be all about speed. All about speed. So I'm going to throw it up. And instead of the clues coming out like one at a time, it's going to be five clues at once. You just have to be quick. And the clues are going to be real simple. So let's say it was Zach Galen. The clues are going to be National League, West, Pitcher, Desert, First name starts with Z, like something like that. It's going to be really quick and really simple. So I'm just warning you. First time, long time. Okay, I'm just warning you guys. This is going to be, uh, it's quick. And first three people on my board are going to get four points each for each correct answer. Uh, and we're heading to this right now. Let's see. Taylor is taking the lead. He's got 15. Magnum's got 14. Jake has got 12, but keep in mind, each one's worth four. Let's do it. Speed round. Okay, and one, two, and American League, East, Lefty, Outfield, and Shuffles. There we go. There we go. That's right. It's Juan Soto. Soto. I think I told you guys about the good morning that he always does out of camp. It's hilarious. It's like Consuela from Family Guy. Good morning. Or she says, that's my baby. So I've got Taylor first with Soto. I've got after second and nano third. That's how it looks on my end. Jake, you were you were so close. Lance right there. Benjamin. Sniper. And Flores. Okay. Next player. I told you guys it's all about speed on this round. National League East guy. Plays in the Big Apple, known for home run derbies, and he's bearish. Boom, 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 boom.
All right, I like it when everybody gets the answer. So let's see, who do we have here? We had, I've got Lance first. Nice job, Lance. Whew, that four points, that's big. Benjamin. Benjamin is new, but he's not messing around. And Taylor again. I think Taylor's just got super fast internet. Uh, Edward, you were right there. And uh, in Chicorta, you, you guys were right there, right behind him. Yeah, I think Taylor's just got super fast internet. <laughs> and fast fingers. Fast finger Freddy. Okay, you guys ready? We only got three more. Three more. That was Polar Bear. Everybody knows that. Uh, this one, it's probably going to take you a minute to, to think about. And by a minute, I mean it's probably going to take about six to ten seconds. And go. NL Central, Wrigley. He's a Vandy man and a two-time gold glover. Oh, that's right. I thought that picture was appropriate. Uh, Dansby Swanson, Vandy guy. Look at Taylor just pulling away at this point. Lives for this stuff. Will. Nice job, Will. And Magnum. Magnum trying to, trying to keep pace. All right, cool. Uh, let's see who was fourth. Athers, you were right there. And Chicorta, again, right there. Uh, Dano, right there. Yeah, Taylor, you just, uh, you got fast fingers for sure. Taylor's got 27 now. I think he's, I think he's got it clinched. Magnum's in second with 18. And we've got a bunch of people in between 10 and 13. Okay, this one's fun. Here we go. In three, two, and one. AL Central, Dominican. Plays at the hot corner, and he will knock you out. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. That's right, guys. Jose Ramirez. I thought that was a fun one. Uh, J-Ram. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, ba, 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 ba. I've got Athers first. Nice job, Athers. Nano was not going to be denied this time. Uh, da, 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 da. And Jake Kalos. Uh, Chakorta, oh my gosh. Man, you, you're right there like every time. There's Ben pretty quick. There's... Uh, uh, Flores, Lance. Okay. Yeah, you're thinking of um, Odor. Uh, Taylor, you were thinking of Odor. Um, <laughs> yeah, full name. Yeah, some of you guys are going like first name, last name. Uh, some of you guys are going whole name. Uh, I'll accept either or both. Uh, so if you're, if you're going for speed, it's okay if you just want to type one of them. Okay, last one. You guys ready? Last one. I hope you guys had a good time tonight. I feel like I prepped this thing for three hours and then we fly through it so fast. <laughs> but, I mean, hey, as long as you guys are having a good time, right? Okay. He plays in the AL West in Space City. He's referred to as King... And he's an outfielder. There's one. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I thought this was going to be easier. Yeah, thanks for letting everybody uh, answer first, Taylor. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. I, I got you. I got you, Athers. 
Uh, you were the first one, and then everybody. By the way, it's Kyle Tucker. Um, but a bunch of people picked J Rod. Maybe the Space Needle is what you were thinking about. Um, but no, Kyle Tucker, King Tuck. Who says King Julio? I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe it's a thing. Athers, got you in here. Pop, pop, pop. So if you guys, uh, if you guys had a good time with this, pound these emojis. Let me know you guys had a good time. Because otherwise, I'm not going to waste my afternoon and prepare the whole thing again. <laughs> all right, all right. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. I had Athers with four. We got J Rod, J Rod, uh, Ben. Shipping in. Ben, man, you came on strong. If you would have got in here earlier. Um, who was who was third? Okay, I see Athers. I see Taylor. Okay, there was there's Taylor. Thank you. All right, cool. Let's go final standings here. Oh, wait, I have one more slide. Bow, bow, bow. Thanks for coming. Uh, okay, so let's go over final standings. We got some rewards. We can talk a little baseball, a little so rare if you guys want to. Absolutely. I blocked off two hours for this. Um, and we've only gone 53 minutes, which is amazing. Oops. Bear with me here. Just got to. Adjust my spreadsheet, and I'll give you guys final standings. Okay, first place. Um, we had, what is this? We had seven, seven guys in double digits. That's pretty impressive. Uh, so, Taylor, first place, 31 points. Ooh, flex. Uh I mean, it, it did help that you got four correct in the third round and four correct in the fourth round. Uh, Athers and Magnum, you guys were both tied with 18. Fantastic. Uh, Jake, Kalos with, uh, and Nano, both with 16. Nice job. And then I've got Lance and Will, you guys both tied with 13. So good stuff. Good stuff. Let me let me check on uh, on how many rewards I have here. Uh, let's see. We have three, four, five, six, wait, seven tie. What do we got? So I know I had posted. I'm gonna try to see the easiest way to do this here. Bear with me. I know this is terrible radio. All right, cool. Um, so I planned on, and you guys can't see this. Let me share the screen. Oh, it's me again. <laughs> Can you get the title of Mr. Relevant? I don't, I don't, I didn't check and see who scored nothing. Um, Okay, these are the rewards. So uh, you guys are going to be able to pick which reward you want. I bought these on Sunday night. And I want to say, how many? Let me, let me double check. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just talking in circles now. Seven. I'll figure out, I'll figure out something for my guy, Will. Um, Okay, Taylor, you finished in first. So, Taylor, which uh, you let me know which card you want. I'll go ahead and send it over to you tonight. And Athers and Magnum, you guys were second and third, so you guys figure out which ones you want to. Will you want a Verlander hat? I will send you a Verlander hat. I'm pretty sure I have one. Oh, oh, Taylor. Uh, Taylor, you want the Otani hat? Or do you want a card?
So this is the one time that Taylor's not fast. Sure, I can make screen big. Boom. It says show hi Otani. It's got a signature on the side. No betting receipts. Or you can take one of these lovely gentlemen. Up to you. Go with the hat. All right, cool. I better not see that thing on eBay next week. Okay, so that uh, that works out just fine. Okay, so I think Athers had to bounce, right? So Magnum, are you still in here? Yeah, and it's not blue. Trust me. Athers and Magnum. Uh, Magnum, pick a prize. Pick a player. I feel like most of these guys are fairly useful. All right, sweet. You got Taj. Uh, I think Athers had to bounce. So uh, Taylor, will you pick a reward for for Taj or Eagle? One of you, one of you two. I'm not for Taj. For Athers, uh, Magnum. I'm going to go ahead and, and send you a, an empty trade, uh, probably in the next hour or so, and that'll have Taj. Um, so Taylor, Eagle, pick a guy for Athers, please. He wants Bryce. Okay, we'll send him Miller. Um, Jake, so rare Southpaw, four guys left. I wish I could make like a, like an X on these guys. That'd be great. So we've got Seth Brown, Starling Marte, uh, Seth Lugo and Lance Lynn. Uh, Jake and Nanotech, you guys are tied. So whoever picks their player first is going to get who they want. Don't think too hard. We'll make a pick for you. Okay, Jacob's Lugo. And that means we've got Seth Brown, Marte, and Lance Lynn for Nano. Nano, get your answer in. And Lance, you are right behind him. Lance and William. And William, I'm happy to send you. If I, I think I still have a Scherzer hat. Uh, my assistant will be in tomorrow. I'll have her check. Um, but I'll send you that. Nano wants Seth Brown. Perfect. No problem, guys. And I hope these cards help. I mean, I tried not to just buy random scrub guys. I tried to bid on guys that you could actually use. So, okay. Thanks. Well, hey, I, I hope you have a great vacation. Uh, you and the wife. You know, th those things matter. So I, I really hope you guys have a, have a great getaway. Um, Lance, did we lose Lance? Uh, what do I have left for Lance? Uh, Lance Lynn or pff, Starling Marte is still there. Uh, Lance Lynn or Starling Marte. And then if we're going to move down, hey, Benjamin, if you're still in here, go on Lance. Lance Lynn. Since William was nice enough to pass his along. if Hey, what's up, Evo? Good to see you. Welcome in. Is Lance still in? No, no, no. Lance is in. Uh, Benjamin. Is Benjamin still in here? Benjamin, uh, do I have your... I need your so rare name. You are going to get a uh, Starling Marte card. Absolutely free, just for hanging out. So drop your so rare name again. I did not get it uh, if you passed it on earlier. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Name, Pranksy, BB1836. Boom, that's where I smashed that emoji. All right, cool, and I'm going to get you guys hooked up with these tonight. Hopefully, they make it into a lineup tomorrow, right? Uh, just so you guys know, lineups did get pushed because uh, one of the games is getting moved to Friday. Uh, so our lineups don't need to be locked until like 11 o'clock tomorrow, which is great. So we should see a little market activity. Um, I know for myself, I'm picking up, I need to pick up one or two cards for classic rosters. Um, but for the most part, uh, I'm, I'm set. I hope you guys are set too. 
freelance. Can't complain about it for sure. Um, anything else you guys wanted to touch on? We're done with all the trivia. We're done with the game night. We can talk so rare. Or I can talk about whatever. Um, yeah, Chakorta, thanks for coming on, man. I saw you DM me. I'll get it. Take a look at that. Uh, Flores, no, I did not see Morosi's uh, limited team. So it's nice that they actually gave him a budget this year. Um, if you guys know me, you know I'm not a big fan of Morosi. Uh, back from my days in, in media, Morosi's just a hack. Nobody likes him. Um, so I hate that they brought him back, but he'll shill. That's all he, that's what he does for a living is shill for agents. So, uh, he'll shill for so rare. I just don't understand why they would pay him when they could have paid other people who would have been a lot better for what they're trying to do. Um, but anyway, <laughs> that's my two cents on Morosi. I think it's a total waste of money. Um, but at least they're doing something. So I don't want to criticize activity. Um, do 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 free hater. Blah, blah. Um, by the way, hopefully you guys all saw that Yamamoto is now available on your common team. So even if like for myself personally, I'm not huge on Yamamoto, but he's likely to debut as like a T1 or a T2. And if I can get Yamamoto and then I can swap him out for a guy like Luis Castillo or uh, Zach Wheeler or Corbin Burns, then I'm absolutely going to do that. So if you have not adjusted your, your common team to pick up Yamamoto yet, you definitely want to. He's only five gems. Uh, also, you, you'll be able to do something very similar with O'Neill Cruz. He's likely to debut as a T1. So even if you don't want O'Neill Cruz, you, you definitely want to make sure you stack as many T1s in your common, uh, your common lineup as you possibly can right away to be able to swap out. Um, like I'm not planning on using Royce Hoskins, but he's probably going to debut as like a tier, uh, like a bottom end tier two or a high end tier three. And that's a guy I can swap out for another pitcher. So just so you guys know, uh, make sure you grab Yamamoto. Yamamoto um, it reminds me of those commercials. The, uh, the, Mo the Motorola commercials, the Moto commercial. Ah, uh, Benjamin, pretty new to so rare. Do you have any tips? I got all the tips, man. Um, you got to be specific, though. I think anybody in here will tell you that I always have an opinion on everything. Uh, I would definitely take Yamamoto over anybody in there. Um because all I want to do with Yamamoto is take him. And then when things lock, I just want to swap him out for another guy. So I'm definitely making sure I take Yamamoto. Um, I think my lineup has uh, my, my three pitchers are Yamamoto, Montez and Otani. And I'm just going to play Otani at first base or a corner infielder. And then I'm going to swap out Royce Hoskins for another pitcher. So I'm going to swap Otani and Hoskins. And I'm rolling, I mean, it's not a huge secret, I guess, if you guys want to see. I don't care. Um, I don't really care about showing my common team. Let me see. I'll share my screen with you here in just a second. What is this? Best one, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you guys can see my my common team. So I, I'm going with the Dodger stack. Uh, obviously, they've got those four games against the Cardinals, and I think they're going to just rake. Um, I'm starting Montez. Do I love it? No. Um, but like I said, my three pitchers are Montez, Yamamoto, and Otani. Um, but keep in mind that Pitchers, for the most part, are not going to throw very deep into games uh, this this weekend. So that might mean somebody throws, you know, like a guy like Logan Webb is probably going to throw five or six innings. Um, Pablo Lopez, probably going to throw like five or six innings. I will not be surprised to see guys like Scooble 
and Reagan's throw like four innings, even if they're throwing well. If they're up at like 60, 70 pitches, I do not expect them to throw deep into games. Um, with that being said, unless your guy's going to get like a K and a half per inning, it's not going to have a huge impact. All you're trying to do is make sure your pitcher isn't going to get shelled this weekend. So, uh, so I definitely wouldn't start Miles Michaelis against the Dodgers, um, but Montez against the Nationals should be okay. Uh, and then I've got Diaz because he's only five gems. And as you can see, I've got a Dodger stack with Otani, Betts, Freeman, and uh, Teo. I could have picked up Outman, but I think Teo is going to be productive. And then O'Neill Cruz has four games. And I don't know if I'm going to hold O'Neill Cruz or not. Like I said, he's going to come out as a T1. Uh, my other outfielder that you don't see is Ronald Acuna. So the only guys you don't see are Yamamoto, Acuna, and Royce Hopkins. Royce, Ho Royce Hoskins. I think that's that should be it. So um, Edwin Diaz too. Yeah, got to have it. Got to have Edwin Diaz. You can swap him out for whoever you want. Hater, Class A. I'll probably swap him out for Doval. Doval is my favorite. Um, my favorite so rare closer is Doval. Um, hello, Moto. Yeah, there you go, Flores. Hello, Moto. Uh, swaps will be huge. I mean, we're all basically going to start off with very similar teams. You might have, you might have a different stack. I know I made that video. I don't know if it helped anybody. Hopefully it did. Um, if anything, it should have just been a little thought-provoking. But uh, for the most part, like we're all going to start off with Montez, Yamamoto, Diaz, Hoskins and Cruz. After that, it's just a matter of how we're packaging up tier ones. So I could have, I initially went like Acuna, Tatis, Cruz, Witt, um, Rafael Devers, Hoskins. And I think I tried to like make a little space for a pitcher like Grayson Rodriguez. But at the end of the day, I'm just going to swap Hoskins out and I'll swap uh, Yamamoto out. And all of a sudden I'll have some stud pitching and then I can always swap out Teo. But I think this Dodger stack is my best opportunity to try to win something in the first week. So that's why I set it up like that. And my concern about rain for the Dodgers. Um, no, no, but maybe I should be. I have not, uh, I mean, I'm going to be in Orange County, so I'm going to be right next to it. Um, I'm going to be right next to L.A. So maybe I should look. Normally, my girlfriend is the one who's like, oh, you know, it's going to rain. Oh, we got to pack this. So I don't I don't worry about it. Um, maybe that's maybe that's bad on my end. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, looks like an 80% chance of rain on Saturday, 65% chance of rain on Sunday. Keep in mind, if you do not live in California, our rain is a lot different. Um, if you live in like Philly or DC or in the South, your rain can come down in sheets. Uh, it doesn't typically work like that in California. And if it does come down in sheets, it does for like 10 minutes. So it doesn't mean it, it, Never does. Uh, but for the most part, our rain is just a lot different. Um, it's very mild. So 80% is pretty intense, though. Um, let's see. So I'm looking at my, my phone here. Um, but it looks like... Uh, it looks like it's going to rain overnight. And it might rain a little 20% chance to rain during the game. So I wouldn't sweat that at all. Not a big deal. Um, bop, 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 bop. Yeah, Corbin Burns should be an absolute beast. Should be. He kind of he starts a little slow. At least he did in last year in Milwaukee. But he's a beast. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he struggles a little bit just because there's going to be so much pressure on him and he's in a free agent season. But um, there's no reason for him not to just dominate when a Cy Young in AL. Uh, I do need to I think I made my notes here. 
I need to place my MLB prop bets tonight. So I still got to figure out. I think the Cubs are going to win the Central. I don't think that's bold, but I think the Cubs are going to win the Central. If you asked me a month ago, I probably would have said the Reds. But with the Cubs picking up uh, re-signing Bellinger and with Matt McClain going down and Marte going down, um, I just don't think the Reds pitching is going to be good enough. So not that the, the Cubs pitching is great, but at least they have steel. Um, so I, I think the Cubs are going to go there. I think Burns, it's going to be tough for anybody to uh, to beat Burns. I know everybody's pumped on Scooble right now, but Scooble also could be on an innings limit. So just keep that in mind. Um, where are we at here? Da, 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 da. Taylor, I, I see you made that comment about majors. You know, the hardest thing for me as a, as a so rare player and as a so rare, I guess I wouldn't necessarily consider myself an ambassador, but from someone who people expect to know things, I can't see any of those other games. So like I have a buddy who, who plays – and um, I don't know what to tell him. I don't see anything. So it's, it's really challenging for me to be able to give him like direction on certain things because I just don't know what games he can play. Um, so anyway, we'll see. Um, blah, 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 blah. Important cards are saying, da, da, da. Concerned about rain out. Okay, Flores is saying to build it through, blah, blah, blah. I got Damien blowing up my uh, my DMs right now. I'm trying to, to get them to set up that group for me, like we had an MBA. And I asked, I asked him for it a year ago. And I said, look, guys, I'm not going to promote like the, the affiliate or the ambassador stuff until you guys set the group up because the group matters to me. And, uh, and they didn't do it. They set it up for like other people and they never set it up for me. So, so last week I reached out to Nicholas and I was like, Hey, can you guys just get this set up for me? It's like a really small ask. You guys have already done it. Just, just code me one copy and paste the code. Um, five best stacks. So Samuel, here's the thing. Um, Samuel, I don't know if you're playing limited uh, if you're playing common, for the most part, the uh, the stacks are more of a low cost option. But the challenge is with our reduction in rewards, they're typically not as successful. Um, it's just a, a low cost option to be able to to give you a path, give you a lane. Um, now, granted, I say that, and I, I don't have these numbers updated, but I can give you these numbers. You're you're not able to see them. But as of this afternoon, the odds for players playing championship to win cash are extremely high. So if you are, like I said, this is from this afternoon, but if you're playing limited, 41% of the entries are going to win cash. Rare, 48% are going to win cash. Super rare, 20% are going to win cash. Uh, which means that if you, like I'm running stacks uh, and I'm not running stacks because I suggest them, I don't. I, I'm essentially running a limited and a rare stack because I think it's cost effective and I'm going to see how it works. It's not something as someone who has been on a lot of podiums, won a lot of super rare contests, you pick your studs and you ride with your studs. Um, and that's what I'm going to do on super rare. Like my super rare team, if you look at it, is going to have judge and J rod and Chisholm and Bo Bichette, a bunch of four gamer studs. But um, my limited and my rare, I'm just going to run Ranger stacks. And I, I talked about this before with you guys. The I think that there is going to be benefit to maximizing your collection score on limited. Because if you can roll in with not only your, your 5% uh, like in-season bonus, but also a four or a 5% bonus on top of it for collection score. I think that will be impactful on limited. I think it can be impactful on rare because you're, you're rolling in with a 15% you throw, like I hit 750 points 
for my Ranger stack for rare. So all of my guys are going to be, so I've got Seeger and Carter and Garcia, and they're all going to be at 20%. Um, they only have three games this week, so I don't know how that's going to go. But in a couple weeks, uh, it should it should be really beneficial for me on a weekend, and it should be a uh, killer for me on four game weeks. And I think in game week four is the Rangers' fourth four game week. So I feel like that's going to come in pretty handy. On the super rare side, though, where you're already getting a 25% bonus, it's obviously it's a lot more expensive to get your collection bonus, but it's also a lot less impactful. So for me, what I'm doing on the super rare side is I'm picking up a couple scrubs if I can, and I'm going to try to get like the 3%. So if I can get like a 3% on my Bregman with a couple of Astro scrubs, cool. I'm not going to try to shoot for four or five percent though. It's just going to be too expensive. At that point, it's just it's not cost effective. So, with that being said, uh, I think Mitch does a lot of breakdown for stacks. I do not break down stacks. I can talk baseball and I can tell you who's got good matchups if I look at it. But and I haven't done my um, my game week one breakdown yet. I was going to do that tonight. But for the most part, I pick and pop. So that's typically how I work. I pick and pop the best guy, the best matchup. So if I see J-Ram, I'm going to start J-Ram, and I'm not going to start Jimenez and Naylor. I'm just going to pick J-Ram. I'm going to look at Chisholm and say, okay, he's got four games against Pittsburgh. I like that matchup. You know, he's facing righties three out of four games. Like, I'm going to look at it on an individual basis. I don't look at it from a team standpoint. Um. If you're going to roll a stack, though, just roll it. Just pick your team and just roll with it. Um, is Damien want to give you free tickets? Um, Taylor, I asked John to come in, and I he knew we were doing game night, so it sounds like not this time, but hopefully. Hopefully. Um, bah, 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 bah. Too many teams with four games this week. Yeah. Uh, if you guys want to know, because I've already done the homework, and I know those of you who are in my Discord have already seen this, but I'm happy to share with you right now. Uh, game week two, the White Sox, Indians, I'm sorry, the Guardians, the White Sox, Guardians, Royals, Marlins, and Cardinals are the only teams with four game weeks. So I guess I can, uh, yeah, John, I agree, Taylor. John is absolutely great. So we've got the White Sox. I'll just type these in. Guardians, because I've already done all the homework for you. Um, Royals, Marlins, and Cardinals have four gamers in game week two. So there you go. If you want to take it, if you want to plan ahead a little bit, the Marlins and the Guardians were the only two teams that have four gamers the first two weeks. Um, Colorado goes home for game weeks three and four. Uh, they're playing Tampa Bay and Arizona. So it's important to keep that in mind. And then they, they head out on the road again. The, the killer is going to be game week eight when the Rockies are back at home and they play the Padres in a four gamer that week. So could be an opportunity, could be an opportunity. Um, yeah, Sam the Sniper, that looks really good. Your, your common lineup looks awesome. Rabiosa, bringing it. Full Dodgers and Brave Stack this week. Um, you know, the, the hardest thing is going to be if you're not playing in uh, if in champion, if you're playing in any of the classics, then it's going to be hard to win rewards, and we're going to see that. Um, hey, Evo, Evo Dreamer, what's up, man? My fellow Ranger, well, I, I don't live in Texas, but I'm a Rangers fan this year, so we're going to have to uh, stream games together. We'll do a, a Rangers watch party. Um, bah, 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 bah. It sounds like uh, Rabiosa has two accounts. Are you multi-account in that, Rabiosa? I'm just messing with you. Um, 
we'll get multi-entry, I guess, by All-Star break. I would not be surprised if they introduce it sooner, if auctions start to slow. Um, yeah, Taylor is, a, Taylor is a season ticket holder for the Rockies. Him and Dinger are besties. Uh, bah, 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 bah. These five cap guys for two-tier pitching. Okay. All right, cool. I think I caught up on everything. Um, anything? I, I know we're, we're starting to dwindle here. Uh, we've got 10. By the way, I don't care if we have two people in here or if we have 50 people in here. You don't worry about the people that aren't in here. So I'm only worried about you guys. If you guys still want to talk baseball or talk so rare, I am happy to do it. Uh, if you guys are ready to wrap it up, that's okay with me too. Um, but I can only respond if you're talking to me. Otherwise, I'm just yelling into the darkness. And I can talk and talk and talk. So you don't want to just kind of wind me up and let me go. Um, so Evo, let's look at this team. Montez, Diaz, Freeman, Mookie, Carroll, Otani, Lourdes Jr. Okay. Uh, yeah, Guriel's got uh, he's got that four gamer against the Rockies, and we know the Rockies pitching is not great. So yeah, the Diamondbacks have have a really nice matchup this week. Um, probably one of the, with the exception of Carroll, probably one of the least expensive stacks. Um, obviously, you gotta you gotta pay up for Carroll, but. They've got a great matchup, and then in game week six, they also have a uh, they have a matchup. I guess we could, uh, I guess I could show this off. Those of you who are in my Discord have seen this. This is the alpha. This is the good stuff. So this is what I do. Um, and I will say, I had some ass at who was on Twitter and was messaging me like on discord before and I guess he just doesn't win much and he blamed me for winning all the time because I, I had all the good cards. Um, and I'm like, okay, well if it's that easy, why don't you buy the good cards too? <laughs> but the reality of it is there's a lot of people who have a lot of good cards. It's just not that easy. Uh, and it takes a lot of luck, honestly. You know, things have to have to fall your way. But, um, and I don't have all of them, but I, I did definitely last year. I had a bunch of studs. Uh, but it's not easy to win in Super Rare. In fact, it was the hardest competition to win last year. Only 9% of entries won in Super Rare Pro last year. But that was my, that's my bread and butter. And the reason I'm able to win is obviously having a good deck of cards is helpful, uh, but you, you need to find your, your windows because when you're competing against a bunch of sharp guys like Jewy and Zuby and Master Nader and YNWA, JMI, and Luke, and I mean, whales that spend a lot more than I do, you have to be able to, you got to know baseball and you got to, you got to pick your spots. So part of it for me is, setting up this sheet that you guys see right here. So I know I can plan ahead who's got what. And I know some of you guys probably are screenshotting this, which is completely okay. Um, I should probably do this part. So that way, um, that way you, you give me some love. Uh, and for those of you who are in my discord, you've already seen all this, but, uh, Oh, and by the way, I need to make sure I plug. Um, if, if you're new, or if you don't have a lot of time to commit to your so rare MLB team, I would strongly suggest so rare FP strongly suggest Alex over there does a great job. He's always grinding. He's got a fantastic community. Uh, it's a couple bucks a week, but if you want to be able to understand baseball better, he'll handhold, he'll answer your questions. Or if you just don't have a lot of time, he makes this real easy to use spreadsheet where you can just plug your players in each week and he'll tell you which guys are going to perform better. Obviously it's not a hundred percent accurate, but it gives you, he, but he does the homework. So, and for some of you that are successful and you just don't have a lot of time, but you love baseball and you're enjoying so rare, I would strongly suggest so rare FP and Alex over there. 
Uh, I think he, 10 out of 10 times, I would use it over the server data projections. So, um, and I think that the server data guys do a great job on, on what they do. But for this type of thing, if someone asked me, I would say, absolutely. That's my commercial for server FP. I get nothing from it. I think Alex is a great guy and I think he works hard. So there you go. Um, this is the stuff that I do. I don't run anything. I don't charge anything. I, I mean, I've got a discord, but I don't want to be committed to having to do this every week. So for people in my discord, it's, uh, it's available. So, and I know there's a handful of you guys that are in my discord, so it makes it easy that way. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. let me catch up here. Two lefties this weekend. Did Carol hit lefties as well? Uh, he hits lefties. Okay. Um, the issue with Carol and lefties is Lovello is a dumpster fire. And sometimes Lovello will hit him at the bottom of the order if they're facing a lefty. The only lefties I typically ever worry about with the lefty-lefty matchup is a hard-throwing lefty. If you have a lefty who's going to top out 92 to 94, then there's really no reason for you to bench your lefty uh, if you have a good lefty hitter. Like, you're never going to see Freddie Freeman benched against a guy who throws 92. Like, it's just not going to be a thing. Um, but my concern is that Lavello drops him in the order. And, okay, keep in mind, let me, let me reset real quick. What you are trying to do every single week is you are trying to maximize the number of at-bats that your players have versus below average pitching. That is what you're trying to do every single week. So you have to keep in mind a few factors here. The first factor is that the Diamondbacks are going to be at home. The second factor is that they're going to be playing the Rockies, which means that they're likely to win at least two, if not three, if not all four games, which means that Corbin Carroll or any other Diamondback is going to have one inning less of hitting in those victories. So essentially what you're doing, hey, Lincoln, good to see you, man. Uh, essentially what you are doing by uh, starting Diamondbacks is understanding that you are likely going to cut out three, possibly four of the innings that your hitters could potentially hit. Whereas if you're hitting with Rockies, you know you're going to have that ninth inning because it's the road team. So just keep that in mind. Uh, also, with the Diamondbacks, the Rockies staff is not great, and the, the Rockies bullpen also is not great. So if Carroll starts against a lefty, and it's not a really hard-throwing lefty, ideally he should hit in the top of the order. And as soon as they get through that starter, a lot of starting pitcher or a lot of managers are going to bring in a righty to be able to kind of flip the script on the lineup. So I wouldn't sweat it too much. I mean, when you have a guy like Carroll, you're always going to start Carroll, especially in a four-gamer. Um, anyway, that's, that's my long answer, but hopefully I just explained a lot that gives you some insight on that. Um, oh, Jake, I love the data. Uh, looks like his slug 552 versus 382. That's okay. I'm not worried about Carol slug versus lefties though. Cause I just want to get on base and steal bases. Right. Like, Hey, if you're going to hit home runs against righties and you're going to hit singles or draw walks and then steal a base against lefties. That works for me too. This is a reminder. Um, ba, 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 ba. Where are we at? Much hit, major hit. Mm. I will be watching all the games. Uh, so the Padre games at one, I'll be watching the Padre game exclusively. Uh, when everything else is on, I'll probably just run like a four box and watch. Um, I watch, I try to watch everything. Um, it's, it's tough. I know uh, the guys earlier were talking about the beginning and, and I love the concept. I think most of us that are NFL fans absolutely love red zone. Uh, beginning definitely has a long way to go before it gets there. Uh, they could start with a host. Um, actually, that's not fair. They have a guy who comes in on weekends and he's awesome. And they have a woman who came in every once in a while and she was really good too. It's when they have that, uh, that other guy who's kind of sloppy in there and he just seems like he's somebody's cousin who gets to come in. He's terrible. Um, and they really need to get better at like 
switching the boxes, they'll they'll have one game on and that's the game with sound. And then all of a sudden they'll try to introduce another game and they'll move that to a different box instead of just having like one stationary box that they rotate in and then rotate a commercial. So it's just a technical thing. They probably just have a bunch of interns doing it. Um, but NFL Red Zone, like you never see that on Red Zone. So they should just, whoever is the associate uh, assistant producer for NFL Red Zone should just get paid and have them uh, bring them over to, to the beginning, make it really good, and then charge $5 a month for it. That's what they should do. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, Emo's talking about guys stealing bases. Got to play studs like Gorman and Carroll against lefties. Yeah, 100%, Sam. You got to play those guys against lefties. Um, I mean, I understand Randy Johnson's throwing at you. You're probably not going to like want your lefty out there. Um, not a bad day to take a day off. But for the most part, you get a guy who's throwing like under 96. Start your stud. Start your stud lefty. Your, stung young, your young stud. Put him in there. Uh Do, do, do. And the reason our pitchers suck so often is due to not recovering at altitude. Taylor, I hate to tell you this. It's not that. They're just not good. They're, they're just not good. Um, yeah, Sam, you, the Cardinals might get boat race this weekend for sure. Uh, I would not be surprised if, uh, if Mookie – and Freeman ended up getting pulled in like the sixth inning of multiple games. Um, yeah, Jake, absolutely. I think Ginkle's going to get it. Um, I just completely overpaid on a Ginkle super rare. So I'd love to say I can give you some like insight because I'm in Arizona, but I don't care about the Diamondbacks. Uh, but I, I actually really like Ginkle even without Sewell going down because of the scoring system and the way that Sewell gets used. Uh, he's just, you're, you're going to rack up that they're not afraid to. Th so I like when pitchers aren't afraid to go back to back games. I think it's really important. Um, so I overpaid for a super rare so I could use it this week. Um, but I, I really like Ginko. I, I think I picked up his rare number one for like $16. Um, so I was a little, a little ahead on that, but I was planning on using it before Sewell got hurt. Uh, now it's just a bonus. Uh, I mean, that's, it sounded bad when I said it that way. Uh, I didn't mean it like, yay, Sewell got hurt. That's not cool. Um, but I am going to benefit from, uh, Ginkle being able to get those extras. Uh, Ginkle's a San Diego native. I had no idea. Now I got to look. Kevin Ginkle. He, let's see, went to Southwest, down in Chulawana. Doesn't say where he went to high school. Went to Southwest, transferred to U of A, bear down. That's so strange. And for those of you who don't know, I'm from San Diego, uh, which is why I was like, wow, let me check this out. Um, I don't see where he went to high school, though. Dude got drafted a bunch. Drafted in 2014, drafted in 2015, drafted in 2016. And obviously that's when he went. Nope, no high school data. Oh, he went to El Cap. Okay, he's from East County. El Capitan. Uh, oh, there you go, Nano. You already had the answer for me. Uh yeah, did not know Ginkle was an L Cap guy. Interesting. Those East County girls, though. All right. Um, yeah, so I like Ginkle. I'm using Ginkle this week. Um, I think I said earlier, Doval's like my guy. I really tried to get Doval. I, I think Crypto Poppy just was not going to be denied. I think he went over 500 bucks on Doval, and I, I wasn't committed. I wasn't that committed. Um, but eventually, at some point this, this season, when he gets around 300, I'll pick up a Doval. Um, I don't know how Melvin's going to handle him. 
but we'll we'll see. Um, do I go bets over Bichette in my common lineup, and then go from Soto to Jazz or keep Bichette? Okay, Sam, these are real serious questions. Um, so the answer is going to be bets. And, and and I love Bo. I'm a big Bo fan. I love the flow, uh, but he's just not – he's not Mookie. So uh, Mookie was phenomenal last year. And their lineup for, for most of the season just felt like Betts and Freeman and sometimes Smith. And then guys who were striking out once in a while would run into one. That was most of their lineup. Oh, that's not true. J.D. Martinez was, was fairly productive last year. Um, and then just disappeared in the, in the postseason. But I think now when you look at their depth with uh, Otani added in at the three spot and, and hopefully Dave Robert, Roberts will let Will Smith catch more. I mean, he just signed that contract for dirt cheap. Ten years, $140 million for Will Smith is nothing. Um, I, I think he's one of the best catchers in baseball. And then they've got, uh, they've got Muncie. And I mean, Hayward is kind of like, it's okay. I mean, they have so much power in their lineup that it's okay if you throw a guy like Hayward in there and just take a goose egg. Uh, I think Lux is going to be decent. He's obviously going to hit late. Uh, Outman is going to be in there. They're going to mix in uh, guys like Kiki. They've got Teo hitting sixth. Teo's really a guy who is like a number four hitter and he's going to hit six. So what that means is, I think Mookie Betts could do some ridiculous things on the stat sheet with runs scored. Obviously, he's not a huge runner, uh, which is fine. Uh, and playing shortstop is going to take a major toll on him this year. I don't think he stays at shortstop all year. Uh, one of my buddies was joking that uh, I think he picked up uh, – he was drafting Adamus. We were doing best ball. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to take Adamus right now, and then it'll be great when the when the playoffs happen and I've got – Adamus on the Dodgers, which obviously hurts my soul. But let's see. Last year, Mookie had 126 runs. He could, I mean, back in his 2019 when they were using that, like, uh, that baby ball. Uh, was that? No, no, no. That was 2018. He had 129 runs scored. It's insane. Uh, granted, he was running back more than two. 30 stolen bases, had went 30-30, which is really hard for a right-handed hitter to do in Boston. But 39 home runs last year. He loves to yank off-speed pitches. Just loves it. He's so good. Um, so my, I guess my point was Betts and, and Bichette are just not on the same level. Uh, I think you basically have Betts and Seeger, and, and then the next group of guys, um, which could be like uh, Turner and potentially Gunner and, and Bichette and all these. Uh, but, but Betts and Seeger, when Seeger's healthy, that's just where it's at. Um, would I go Tovar, Hanager, or Yelich with three games? Over who? Yelich would be my, I mean, off the top of my head, because uh, I haven't done my cheat sheet yet. Um, we'll see. They play the Mets. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking Yelich. Um, Tovar's got four games. Hanager, Hanager might not even play all four games. We know how they're going to have to be careful with him. Um, and they're playing in Boston. So not that Hanager doesn't have power everywhere because Hanager always has power. Uh, he's one of those guys that his power should translate to every park. Um, so for me, the question is, do I go Tovar with four games or do I go Yelich with three games? And my answer to that would be Yelich with three games versus Tovar playing on the road and facing uh, Gallon and Kelly in those first two games. So I'm definitely going Yelich. Um, Yankees over Dodger mini stack, but I have to go Soto down to jazz. Um, so here's the thing, Samuel week one, your goal is to make sure when you draft this lineup, you have as many T1 players as possible. You can always swap them, but your goal is to have as many T1s as possible because it's hard to win them. 
So you got to have those T1s right now. It's going to make your weeks a lot easier moving forward. Even if you're just swapping guys, you've got to have as many T1s. So when you, when you talk to me about swapping Soto and Chisholm, you're basically swapping a T1 for a T2. That's why that's a big no. Oh, Seattle. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're right, Jake. Um, I was looking at the wrong box. Yeah, Seattle's at home. Um, you know, with a guy like Hanniger, I just, it shouldn't matter. But, and I know Seattle's hard to hit the ball out of, um, but I think Hanniger is okay. I just don't think he'll play all four games. So they're going to, they know they have to, there's some load management with a guy like Hanniger. They know that. Um, and they signed Garver, so they're going to have to use Garver and, um, and Raleigh creatively. And they gave Garver a lot of money. So what's roster resource say about their, their lineup? So just so you know what I'm doing, I'm going to fan graphs to roster resource, uh, which my buddy Martinez runs. Super great guy. Um, so they're planning on using Garver at DH, Raleigh at catcher, and Hanniger in right. So Hanniger is definitely not going to play 150 games in right field. So they're going to need to manage him differently, uh, which probably means like Garver gets a day off, uh, Raleigh DHs some days, and Garver gets a day off, and Hanniger DHs some days. And, um, you know, we we'll kind of have to see how that plays out. But, uh, I mean, Garver hitting fourth is really interesting. He's not that good. Uh, I mean, not that he's terrible, but he's just – he's not good enough where you're going to use the DH on him and have him hit fourth. I, I also do expect that the Mariners are going to regress this year. Um, I do like their pitching, but uh, – because I, I love Castillo. I think he's awesome. I'm not as high on Kirby as everybody else is. Not that I don't think he's good. I'm also not that high on – on Logan Gilbert. I feel like Gilbert should be a lot better. Uh, I feel like Bryce Miller is decent. He's a really solid middle rotation guy and Wu's hurt. So they're going to start off with Hancock in the rotation. Uh, I think the, the Mariners are 82 to 85 win team. Uh, and if some things go wrong, like Julio goes down, then that's a 77 to 79 win team. Um, pop, 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 pop. Always, Taylor. It's always good to get a second opinion. You don't have to. You know, the thing is, like, when I used to host uh, fantasy football, so when I did radio, I, I had my normal show, and then during football season, we were the, the flagship of the Chargers, which was awesome. Uh, just the access and the stuff we got to do was so cool. Uh, but I got to host a fantasy football show. So every Thursday night, I would host a fantasy football show, and I would always tell everybody, at the end of the day, it's your lineup. And you have got to feel good making these decisions. So I'll tell you my thinking and who I would start and why. But at the end of the day, you don't have to agree with me. It's your lineup. It's your decision. I mean, you you can be wrong. You don't have to listen to me. <laughs> um, that's what I would tell people. I had some absurd start set rate. I think my, uh, my start set rate was like 75%. It was absurd. That was back when I was really dialed in. How many possible T1s could you get in a common draft if you do it correctly? Well, I'll tell you. Bear with me here. I think it's five. Okay, so you're gonna take Otani as a pitcher then you're going to take uh, one of your tier one first baseman. So if you go 20, you can use it on like Freeman or Olsen. Uh, Vladimir is likely to be a T1 and he's only 16 gems, probably the cheapest tier one. Um, that's a, that's a bat. Um, so you've got Otani, you've got your first baseman. Then you're using Hoskins. 
you've got a 20 spot for your middle infielder, which is like Betts or Seager or Witt. Then you've got O'Neill Cruz, who looks like he's going to be a T1. And then you have uh, Acuna and another T1, uh, like Tatis. So you've got six, and then you draft Yamamoto, who's probably going to be a really high T2, if not a T1. So if you do it this way, you can get six. My lineup uh, is not like that because I decided to go Dodger stack and do it the hard way. But uh, but that's the way that that's the way you should do it. I only did it this way for me because honestly, I don't care about common. Um, but I felt like I'm just going to go for it first week and see what happens. Normally, I end up getting bored with common and not playing uh, later on during the year. But I figured for the sake of being a team guy, I would jump on. Um, but that's the best way to do it. Um, Sam, it's probably because you're using Otani at your corner infield instead of your starting pitching. So use Otani as a starting pitcher, and then you um, – what's your team look like? We'll get four. Okay, J. Ram's fine. Um, Betts, Judge. Okay, you have Otani at pitcher. So you've got extra points somewhere. Just uh, tell me who your 10 are. You're using more than five or six points on some of these guys. You're also probably using what? Well, let me let me look. On your corner. So J Ram's 19. That's probably making it a little harder for you. Um, you if you go down to, to Devers or Vlad. Those are T1 guys that you can get at 17 and 16. And I am assuming that you're using Diaz at relief, Hoskins, O'Neill Cruz, Montez, and, and Yamamoto. Hello, Moto. Oh, gosh. I hope Motorola just pays him. Hello, Yamamoto. That would just be great. It'd only be great for people like me who still remember those commercials. Everybody else would, would not get it. It wouldn't make any sense. Okay, Montez, Yamamoto, and then you said you're using... Hey, 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 hey. Um, you said you're using Otani, a pitcher, so that's good. Hoskins, Cruz, J-Ram. Let me run this real quick. Um, okay, so you got Montez at five. Yamamoto at five, Otani at 20, right off the gate. I don't think there's any T1s at 15. I haven't seen any. Um, who are your first? Okay, you got Diaz, right? Yeah, you got Diaz. You're good there. Um, okay, you're using Hoskins. You're using... J Ram, who's 18. So I know you're using J Ram because you want to you want to maximize those four starts, which I get. Um, okay, then you're using Betts, who's 20, and Cruz, who's five. And then I'm assuming I'm going to check right now. We got Judge at 20, and then you got Jazz. I'm assuming Jazz is like 16. Yeah, 16. Okay, so you've got, I mean, you've got Otani. He's he's a T1. J Ram's a T1. Betts is a T1. Cruz is a T1. Judge is a T1. So you have five. If you want six, then what you do is you take Jazz out. Um, so what you're what you're doing here is 
you're sacrificing a T1 to have J Ram and Jazz in week one. That's your sacrifice. Uh, if you want to swap those guys out and pick up like Devers and Tatis, then uh, Mike Trout should also be a T1. He's at 17. Um, but I mean, that's what you got to do. You got to swap out J Ram and you got to swap out Jazz. Um, so either you go for a week one, you have one one less T1, or you swap those guys out and you're able to uh, to maximize it. Vladdy should definitely be a tier one. Now, granted, um, you know, they were supposed to release the tiers today. They didn't. It's not a huge deal. I'm not going to jump on the guys for it. Um, they said they're going to release them in the morning, which is great. Um, I think that the tiers are kind of like more for us. Um, but, and they always used to change the tiers like the morning of rewards anyway. So I don't think it was a huge deal. Uh, but they base the tiers on the sales volume, like last five sales of limited cards are typically, I don't know exactly how many cards they take, um, they, but they do have enough data at this point over the last like 15 limited mints to be able to, with, with the exception of newer guys that rolled out like Yamamoto and uh, Luis Castillo and Bryce Harper. Granted, Harper should definitely be a T1 anyway, uh, but they just take that data, extrapolate it, and that's how they make the tiers. And the reason why is because we're not getting rewarded based on how good a player is. We're getting rewarded on how much value he has in the market and his liquidity. So ideally, when you finish in on a podium and you win a tier one card, then you have tier one liquidity. So what that does mean, though, is sometimes the numbers get skewed because right now people might be paying more of a premium for guys that are on, on the Marlins and on the, on the Guardians knowing that they have four game weeks in week two. And that's going to skew the prize pool or skew the tiers. So all of a sudden you might have some guys who are creeping in, like you could see Jazz potentially creep in to the bottom end of tier one, the upper end of tier two because people are overspending for him knowing that they're going to start him the first two weeks. And unfortunately, so rare doesn't have that built in the algorithm and they tend to be a week behind on those things, a game week behind. Um, they said that they're going to evaluate rookies better this year. And I think this is part of, part of the problem is you know, typically if you have a G leaguer come up in the NBA, he's not an impact guy. So they can just kind of roll him out and his sales, you know, with the exception of like the number one and the rookie card and, and the Jersey card aren't going to have a huge impact. So they were able to just throw those guys into the prize pool. Not a big deal. Baseball, it's totally different. You know, we can have a guy like EDLC come in and all of a sudden he has a huge impact and he's a tier one. Is he always going to be a tier one? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I think EDLC is, is probably more the exception than the rule, but we'll have rookies come up that really should be tier two or tier threes, but their first five sales in comparison to the last five sales of another guy are skyrocketing. And all of a sudden we'll see rookies who really shouldn't be tier twos or even tier ones in the wrong prize pool. They said they're going to address it this year. I really hope they do. Uh, they're, they need to have at least X amount of cards minted before they throw them into the pool. Um, I would say that number is probably between 10 and 15, depending on how frequently they're minting them. So a guy like Wyatt Langford, who everybody is expecting to be an absolute stud. Is he going to be a tier one? No, he shouldn't be a tier one, probably a low end tier two, a high end tier three, but his sales, when they, when they drop that next batch, the 40% of the rosters, that they haven't dropped yet. When, when that drops, then you're going to see Chirio and you're going to see Langford that, and they're going to be really expensive compared to everything else. Uh, and they're going to start getting priced out like they're tier ones. Hopefully the team learn their lesson and they're going to adjust on that. They're going to kind of wait for it to cool down a little bit and then throw them into the tier pools. Uh, because like my buddy Zuby last year, 
He got second place in Super Rare Pro and ended up with a Curtis Mead card. There's no way that is a that is a high end tier two. There's just no way. But their system was screwy. And did they take care of him? No. They were like, oh, sorry about it. You know, based on our sales. And I'm like, he's only sold three cards. Like, come on. You got to be smarter than that. But it is also important to remember these guys don't play the same game we do. Doesn't mean they don't buy some cards or throw together some lineups to put on a good show. It just means that we play, you know, we're in, you know, we're neck deep in this stuff where, you know, we're making spreadsheets, we're paying fantasy pros, we're, we're doing all these different things to compete and to win. It's a lot different. And these, these guys who work for the company, they don't necessarily understand the same thing. They don't look at things the same way we do. And it's not their fault. They just don't play it. Uh, so it's important that we give them this kind of feedback. Uh, so anyway, that's that's typically how it works. Um, okay, yes, Vladdy Tier 2, best 19 fielder. Um, Sam, that's a toss-up. Soto, Julio, Tucker. I mean, I would say runs. Uh, I mean, Tucker runs too. But, I mean, Soto's just... the. the Soto is highest floor of all those guys, of those three, and probably also the highest ceiling. Uh, I've got six then. Yeah, Strider. Strider's a little different. Um, Vladdy, Bobby, Bobby Witt. I'm so old that I remember Bobby Witt's dad pitching. Vaguely. But but I have baseball cards with Bobby Witt. Um, yes, Evo Strider is not worth it. Um, I mean, as much as you guys love Strider, keep in mind, you don't need to use all those points for Strider right now because you can always swap out a T1 hitter for him. Um, you know, if you're going to swap out O'Neill Cruz for a pitcher, you can also you can always just pick up Strider. And then all of a sudden, you only had to use five points instead of 20. Um, and as much as I hate to keep reminding you guys, most starting pitchers are not going to go deep into games the first week or two. So just what you're trying to do is find a guy who's going to get strikeouts and not get shelled. That's all you're trying to do the first couple weeks with your pitchers. Um, yeah, Sam Cruz should be when, when I looked at it a couple days ago, Cruz was like the 22nd most expensive limited card according to super rare data or super rare, so rare data. Um, and that's typically a pretty good barometer for, for how they're ranking these guys. Um, Flores, are you trying to win? Or are you just trying to get guys you like? Cause if you're just trying to get guys you like, you're doing a great job. If you're trying to win though, it, you're making it harder for yourself. Um, nice Taylor. Uh, limited American League, Framber, Munoz, J Ramp, J Ram, JP Crawford. Uh, JP Crawford's a sneaky middle infielder. He's not, he's, he's one of those high floor guys. You would think he would run a lot more than he does, uh, but he's sneaky. I, I was just having a little brain fart because I was trying, I thought for a second that I heard something about Munoz being banged up, but I think I was just thinking of Duran. Um, at fourth for All-Star last year. <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Okay, decide who I want to pick for your 20-cap outfielder. Um, I mean, it's Acuna. That's... I mean, if you want to just be different, then sure, go with Aaron Judge. I think the biggest concern here is, I mean, all four of those guys, I'm looking at it right now, but but Judge, Carroll, Acuna, and Alvarez, I mean, I get worried that all of them are going to miss games at some point. Um, Judge, because he's so big uh, that he, he does tend to break, and they're going to have him playing center field, which, okay, um, Corbin Carroll, because he's just so small. Uh, Corbin Carroll's like 
five seven, five eight, 165 pounds. Um, and with all the running he does, it, it definitely takes a toll on you. Um, Acuna, obviously his knee is, is going to be a concern. I know he had that meniscus scare during spring. And your Dan, your Don Alvarez, that guy's always he he is like the oldest 26 year old in the league. I just look at your Don and I'm like, this guy's really 34. And he runs like he's 50. Like every time he runs, it's just I hear his legs going ow, 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 every time he runs. Uh, and I and they still put him in left field. I'm like, please just DH the man. Um because he is such a great hitter, such a great, just DH him and let him play, a, you know, throw him in left field every once in a while, but teach him how to play first base. It's just something, but you got to get him out there for 150, 155 games. Anyway, um, <laughs> trying to win. Okay. Hey, 11th place in, in common is pretty good. That is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, Taylor, always Acuna, always. I mean, I'm looking at these guys who are 19th, right? Soto, J-Rod, Tucker, that they're all about the same. Um, at 18, you got Garcia, Yelich, Tatis, Velasquez, no disrespect, and Jones. Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously taking Tatis in there. Tatis, Garcia. I worry about Yelich breaking at any moment. Uh, obviously, love love Carter and I like Nolan Jones really like Nolan Jones splits last year. So he's, you know, cause otherwise I would just start him when he's at home, but his splits were pretty solid. If, and he was a, a top prospect when he was in Cleveland and he just didn't, didn't work out. So we'll see. I, I really like the, what I've seen out of Nolan Jones. Um, retractive message. What was I not quick enough? Um, then I got Vlad, Otani, and Betts. Yeah, Sam. You know, the thing is, we're all going to start with these, like, killer lineups, which is just hilarious because um, it kind of takes away, like, the draft. But keep in mind, here's the thing. Like, if you work for So Rare, I get it. Like, you don't really care that much about the common lineup to make sure that we don't find your errors and I'll end up with like all-star teams. But as soon as game week one starts, these numbers are going to reset. So O'Neill Cruz is then all of a sudden going to be 18 gems and Hoskins is going to be 12 gems and Montes is going to be 11 gems and Yamamoto is going to be 17 gems. So anybody new that comes in is going to be starting behind the eight ball because we all have all-star teams already. And all we're going to do is keep winning cards every week that are tier ones and tier twos and keep building. Um, for those of you who are still able to play it like the lower levels, like I guess major, then that's a huge advantage for you. Um, and for a company that has trouble onboarding, you definitely don't want to onboard people and put them in a disadvantage right away. You want them, you want to onboard them so they have a chance at some success and then they go, oh, this is fun and I can win some stuff. And, you know, if they come in and they're just getting their head kicked in and they're finishing the bottom 20 percentile, how long are they going to hang out? They're not going to be like, oh, this is really hard and I suck. Let me buy limited cards oh, at a premium price because they're really expensive right now. Like that's that is a terrible approach. But I don't think the guys in the server office really think about it like that. Um you know, you got to, it's five dimensional chess, I guess. Four dimensional chess. Is that what they play in Star Trek? Four dimension, three dimensional. I don't know. Uh, where are we at? Trader for a guy for Nolan Jones that I really like. Yeah, I think Nolan Jones is probably, um, I don't care who you traded. Nolan Jones is like, you're, only horse on that team, Taylor. So whoever you traded was definitely not going to be good enough. Um, so it's okay. Feel good about that. Got to give quality to get quality, right? Um, yeah, Yoshida last year. Yoshida's a nice piece. I think he'll get better this year. 
you know, he's got a year to adjust to the league. Um, obviously, they have a year to adjust to him, but but I think Yoshi is going to be solid. Uh, I also don't think that playing in Fenway is ideal for him, but um, I think he's a good bat on the ball kind of guy. He, he just, you know, he doesn't hit for enough power, and he doesn't just, he's not a pure hitter. So kind of like, what are you? I felt like the Red Sox had a lot of those guys. Like they had Verdugo, who's not like a power hitter, but he's not like a pure hitter either. So you kind of get stuck in limbo. Like you don't have that issue with Devers. Like you know what Devers is. You know what Casas is. Um, but when you get those guys, if they're not going to hit for enough power, they need to be able to hit, to get 180, 190, 200 hits. You know, so they can hit their, their 10 home runs and their 40 doubles. But... I feel like Yoshi and Verdugo were kind of like stuck in, in purgatory in Boston. I mean, obviously Yoshi still is. Uh, and I do expect Verdugo to have a really nice year in Yankee stadium. Uh, I mean, if he pulls the ball, great, but just the fact that he's, he's going to be able to have some home runs that ended up just being doubles in Fenway are going to really help him out a lot. I think he's a, he's a solid hitter. Um, but we'll we'll start to see some of that power again from him. So 15 to 20 home runs, maybe even 25. You get top out at 25, it gets hot. Excuse me. But I like Verdugo. I think he's going to have a nice year. Doogie, obviously Soto's going to be there. If Judge can stay healthy, I mean, the Yankees pitching is obviously sus. But uh, I think Volpe takes a step forward. They've got some. They've got some nice pieces, and they just traded for John Birdie today. I'm assuming he's going to play third base. While we have roster resource up, we could take a quick look. Now we're just doing team previews. Um, so they have Birdie at third base. Um, if you're a guy who likes to play value, if they haven't already sold, John Birdie uh, could get you 40 steals. Pretty easy. I like that. I really like that. But, um, I mean, Birdie's not like a stud, but at the end of the day, if you're you're playing value plays, um, and hopefully at some point, I know you guys have heard me talk about this positional cap for underdog. Um, I really hope they do that at some point because uh, it just it really gives a lot more of our, even if they just gave away coins, like they just gave away cards like the top 5% and just gave away coins. Yeah, that's fine. You know, give away like some tier threes at the top. And uh, I think something like that would be very welcomed by the community Um, because you want to make use of those other cards. Um, Montes. Yeah, I'd say Montes being a tier three is is reasonable. Absolutely. Um, We kind of need to see how he pitches. I mean, if he, if he, ends up going three innings and give it up six runs to the Nats, whatever people paid for him is going to half. Um, and that's, that's going to change things. But on the initial tier, I think that's reasonable. The um, you're looking at, that's basically the top 200 players are going to be uh, tier threes. So he's starting opening day. I could see that. I don't think that's a stretch. Hmm. Scooble, Munez, Vladdy, Gorman, Harris, Torque, Varsha. Um, ben, that's a really killer team. Obviously a little worried about Varsha. I think he's a little banged up already. I do like the Blue Jays. I know that uh, the guys were talking about that earlier. I mean, I like the Blue Jays because I like the Blue Jays. I don't think they're that well-constructed, and I think they're terribly managed. Um Springer was able to play a lot last year since they moved him out of center field over to right. So that's a huge win for them. I think Springer's great. Um, I think Vladdy needs to put 20 pounds back on. He seems to be one of those guys who just plays better when he's bigger. Obviously, you guys know how I feel about Bo. Uh, Justin Turner is going to wake up and be old one day. I don't know if it's going to be this season yet. I like Varsho a lot. He had a down year last year. I think part of the problem is they, they adjusted the ballpark heading into last year and then it was going to be more beneficial for the right-handed hitters. And what ended up happening is they hit worse. They hit more doubles. They hit less home runs. So all of a sudden a bunch of chappies home runs ended up being doubles. They need to 
they didn't correct that for some reason. I don't know if the ballpark op is being stubborn or what, but they got to fix that. Um, I like Varsho. I think he has a decent bounce back here. I just don't know where that is. Is he the guy that we got to see in Arizona or is he the guy we saw in Toronto last year? I don't know who he is yet. And that's, that's part of the problem. Um, Alejandro Kirk really struggled last year. Kiermaier can't hit. So here's the problem with the Blue Jays. Their seven, eight, nine hitters cannot hit. You got Kiermaier, uh, IKF, and Biggio. They're finally going to play Biggio, which after long last, they're finally going to play Biggio. Though Biggio is not a great hitter, but I think he could be respectable. But when you look at that lineup, you basically have your first three guys, and then your next couple guys are like, eh. And then your next four guys are just praying that somebody puts the, the bat on the ball. That is not a recipe for success. Point being, Varsho is the only way Varsho might actually score any runs is if he hit home, if he hits home runs. He might have a really hard time getting home. So he might have plenty of uh, RBI opportunities if uh, Justin Turner does not take them ahead of him or take them before Varsho gets up. But otherwise, that lineup behind Varsho, he's going to have no protection. I don't like that. And keep in mind, Kirk only plays like 60% of the games. So all of a sudden, they're going to have Brian Servin. So, I mean, they're probably going to end up end up using like a can't no gosh ikf is probably going to hit six on days that kirk rests or they're gonna now they can't really dh kirk yeah they're in a tough spot um and i mean their pitching's respectable but no they're they're in a real tough spot so anyway varsho he's he's the weak spot um Got to run. Taylor, it's great, man. Have a great evening with your fiance. And uh, good luck in your first game week. Uh, yes, I do need you to send me your address. You know what? No, I probably still have it from when we sent you that beanie. So, Taylor, I have to be like your favorite so rare person. You get hooked up all the time with me. Um. All right, cool. Where are we? Evo, common team. Let's let's dig in. Carol, Gariel. Okay, you're going for it this week. Uh, versus Soto and Chisholm. Hmm. Who do I like? I like Soto and Chisholm. Um, Soto's got a tough matchup in in the first game of the series because he's playing Framber. Uh, but after that, I think Soto's. I think he's real happy to be in New York. And I think he's going to do some real exciting things. Um, nobody hits in Petco. And Soto hit in Petco. I just think about what he can do in Yankee Stadium without the marine layer and without all the drama uh, like the Padres have in the clubhouse. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm going Soto and, and Chisholm. And just be ready to swap out Chisholm. Because we know he, he's going to get hurt. He just It's unfortunate, but we know he's going to get hurt. Like I have Chisholm, I'm starting on my super rare pro team. And I'll use him for two weeks. And then I will try like hell. This, you will see me everywhere trying to, to trade Chisholm. Um, I'm going to try to sell high on him for sure. Uh, where are we at here? Blah, blah, blah. What's going on? All right, Flores, got to go to bed. Anytime, man. Hope you guys, uh, who we still got here? I think Evo's still in here. Sniper's still in here. I don't know if Ben's still in here. I can't, you know, that's part of the challenge. I can't see who's in here at all. Um, let me unpin this. But if you guys, uh, if you guys have, got, have anything else that you want to talk about baseball-wise, I am happy to give you my two cents and uh, try to steer you in a certain direction. Um, I think you guys got all the alpha I have. Ah, Jake, 
Have a great night, man. Thanks for coming in. Uh, you need an ale pitcher, an ale relief pitcher. Uh, Class A is obviously the first guy who comes to mind. Um, I think Class A is – I don't think Class A is great. Like, he should be better. The guy's a beast, and he can hit triple digits, so you'd think he'd be better. The one thing I really love about Class A is they are not afraid to throw him back-to-back -back games at any time. So – the only challenge is Class A is also the most expensive reliever. So let me take a quick look here. Um, I think if you were looking long-term, I think Cano at Baltimore is going to look good. Kimbrell's going to blow saves. But when that happens, Cano's going to get the nod. Wouldn't touch Jansen. So I, I know I've mentioned this before in other streams. When I look for relief pitchers, there's a couple things I look for. Uh, first thing I look for is that a manager is not afraid to throw a guy back to back games because especially on a weekend, you need a, a relief pitcher who's going to get in more than one time if you're going to win. Um, so I need a pitcher. I need a manager who's going to trust his closer enough to throw back to back. Second thing is I like to find closers ideally who throw in pitchers ballparks um, because typically that means that there's going to be a little bit of forgiveness. Uh, they're going to be able to get away with a little more, like Munoz is that kind of guy. Uh, also, if you play in a pitcher's park, you normally play a lot of closer games. If you're playing closer games, you're using your closer more. So Munoz falls into that. Uh, Doval falls into that. I think Robert Suarez is going exceptionally cheap. When his super rare comes up, I will absolutely buy it. Uh, he's the Padres closer. Uh, he's fairly hit or miss, to be honest, but uh, he's going to have plenty of opportunities to close. He's going to have an opportunity to close like 35 to 40 games this year. Um, let's look. Uh, obviously, Hayter is going to put up points. Not a guy who likes to throw back-to-back, -back, though. Mm, Estevez, if you want to be cheap, I don't think the Angels are going to win very much. Ballpark plays pretty fair. Um, Duran is hurt right now, probably get him on a, for a decent price, but I think Duran is fantastic with, with the twins. Um, Clay Holmes, I don't really trust Clay all the time, but I think Clay Holmes is a nice uh, value pickup. Talked about Munoz. Uh, Pete Fairbanks is really effective. He just can't stay healthy. Um, and I, I love Romano with the Jays, but he's going to start the season on the IL. Um, and that's pretty much, any closer worth picking up in the in the AL? Do, do, do. Yeah, Sam, I'm I'm with you. Munoz, Duran, th those are the guys who kind of fit my my target. Do I like Vlad this game week? Um, over who? That that's always got to be the question. Um, like I need options. Is it Vlad or is it like, is it Vlad against the field or is it like Vlad against Matt Olson? Like, what are we looking at? I'm going to pull up my cheat sheet here that I haven't worked on yet. Um, let's see. Toronto's facing Eflin, Savali, Littell, Alexander. Hmm. I'm not worried about it. I mean, Eflin's pretty solid last year. Um, I want to say that was like his best year as a starting pitcher too. Um, but I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I mean, he's got good matchups on the last day of the game week. He faces against the lefty. That's great. Tampa is more of a pitcher's park, but it's, it's fairly neutral. Like that doesn't come into my equation. Obviously Vladdy, if he hits the ball, it's, if he squares it up, it's going to go out of any ballpark. Hmm. Gosh, sorry, this thing is making my ear itch. Um, so let me put it right back in. Do, 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 do. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, then the Vlad, your last T one, he's he's sixteen. If you have another point, then I, uh, then you could look at Devers, but but yeah, just go Vladdy. And keep in mind, you as soon as the game week locks, you can swap him out for the next week. Not a big deal. Probably swap him out for like J Ram for the next week if you want to. Um, 
Yes. Uh, Nano, absolutely. Munoz, stud. What I try to do with the relief pitcher situation, and if you look at my gallery, you'll see this. Um, I normally try to get like three to five sol solid relief pitchers. They don't have to be the best relief pitchers. Um, but I try to get like at least one dude who is like top shelf. So I want either Class A or Doval or Hader or Devin Williams if he was playing. I, I want one guy, at least one guy that is a top shelf closer. And then I want to have like three to four other guys that I can play matchups if I need to. Because if I'm going into a four gamer and I've got Evan Phillips, I'm going to use him over Doval with three games. That's the way it works. Now, there's some other things that come into play. You know, what teams are they playing? Are they at home? Are they on the road? Um, you know, what the pitching matchups look like in the first game. There, like I said, there's some other things that do come into play. But for the most part, I want that one stud closer and then like three to four other guys who are pretty solid that I can just rotate and basically run like a taxi system with them. I do the same thing with starting pitchers. I want to have five to seven stud starting pitchers and then I'm just rotating them. It gets a little tricky at the beginning of the season because one, you know, they're not as impactful, but two, a lot of them are all pitching on the same day in the beginning. So it takes a little while for them to kind of work their way out. Um, so they're all not like throwing on Thursday, then all throwing on Tuesday, then all throwing on Friday, um, or on Sunday. Uh, but I want a stable of five to seven stud starting pitchers that I can rotate with guys who are high strikeout guys. They're going to throw six, seven innings. They're, they're setting up a good matchup. They can win those kind of things. And I'm, I'm just picking my spots. And in terms of roster construction, like this is what I would tell somebody new. Somebody is new getting, getting in and they're trying to put together a team. I'd say, look, you want to get three corners, three middles, five outfielders, five relief pitchers, five to seven starting pitchers. You buy that with the exception of any major injuries, you're good all season. You'll have enough to be able to rotate. Uh, but, but that's pretty much all you need to be able to like set your team up and just roll with it. So I don't think a lot of people really digest that on the, on the roster construction side, but that's really all you need to do. And you win rewards here and there. And you, I mean, for the most part, like with, with champion now, it's all about winning money. That's, that is everything is winning money. Nothing else matters. So if you're buying cards right now, new cards, you're just trying to race as hard as you can, as fast as you can to break even. That is the whole point. And once you hit break even, then you're free rolling the rest of the season. So for me, so that there's, there's four of us left in here. So I'll give you guys all the, all the alpha here. Um, so my strategy with buying Rangers was that it was likely going to be a playoff team. So what I could do is I could stack these Rangers take advantage of the collection bonus on limited and rare, run hard with them, buy old season starting pitchers and relief pitchers, rotate those guys in, and then as it gets to the end of the season, when people start paying for playoff guys, sell all my Rangers. I should win enough during the season to hit my break even, and then whatever I can sell my cards for going into postseason is pure profit. So that's the plan. Um, we'll find out if it works. We'll find that, we'll find out if it works. Uh, cause I could tell you the other way I did, which was basically like buy whoever I want and just win didn't work. Uh, I mean, I, I won a lot, a lot. We're talking, uh, eight times first place, 25 podiums, 47 super rare rewards last year. And at the end of the day, I was in the red which is crazy to me. So especially when I think about how much less I spend than guys like Luke and Zuby and Mike and YNWA and Jewy. And I spend so much less than them and I won just as much and I still was in the red. So, so this year, different approach. Um, 
All right, let me catch up here. Sam, I think you I think you got it, man. I think you think you nailed it. Um, you know, Sam, they had announced that there was going to be a limit on the amount of cards you could have in common, but I don't think they ever instituted it. So just keep winning. Uh, there'll be 52 game weeks. I mean, what I'd like to do is just burn some of them. <laughs> like if you have a bad week and you win a T4, I'm like, I'm not going to use this guy. Like he's just cluttering things up. Um, for the most part, I use most of my common cards for training. But um, it, they should put a max on it. Like we don't need to have 70 common cards. Um, do you bother having enough studs to cover all five comps per tier? No. So I, I used to um, because I felt like I always needed to win everything. And it's fun, but at the end of the day, it's it's not fiscally responsible. Um, and my buddy Zuby does this, and I never I don't worry about Zuby, and he does it because it's fun and it's play money to him. But to do that properly, I mean, he'll he'll run um, all teams, all levels. So I don't know how many that is right now. I mean, we're talking unique pro, unique champion, unique all star, all the way down to the to the five limited competitions. He'll run them all, um, and he really enjoys it. But for me, no. So what happened for me last year was I decided I was going to sell all my limiteds except for my Padre team set, and I was going to focus on rare and super rare, and I did. And I did really well in rare, but I wanted to do better in super rare. So the best way for me to do that without putting new money in was I needed to start selling a bunch of my rares. So about two months in, I started selling a bunch of my rares and I, keep in mind, I was also playing unique. So, and I didn't want to put new money in. So I sold a bunch of my rares. I was like, it's too much. I'm not really having that much fun with rares. Um, and I was playing my Padre team stack, which was getting annihilated every week in limited. Um, and I just focused on Super Rare Pro, Rare Pro, Super Rare All-Star. And Unique was kind of like my like whatever's left kind of thing. Um, and it just made it so much easier. Because um, otherwise, what happens is you start to spread yourself thin a little bit. Because you're like, well, you know, I, I you're, you're kind of sitting there going, oh, man, I, I know... I know Adamus has got three games this week and he's a solid middle infielder on my rare NL team, but gosh, you know, if I, if I just want to spend 60 bucks, I can grab whomever that has four starts and I can probably win a tier three instead of a tier four. And all of a sudden you start chasing and that's just not, it's not helpful. Uh, sometimes it works out, but most of the time it doesn't. Most of the time it's like, look, like I, I, I know I said this on like the first podcast I did with Hunter with Hunter. Um, sometimes you just don't have the cards to win and it's okay. So like, I, I don't win every week. Like I never did win every week and there were weeks I, I completely shut out and it's okay. Sometimes you just don't have the cards. You don't have the matchups. I mean, does that happen to guys like Jewy and Zuby? And no, I mean, they have the cards. They just made bad decisions if they don't win. Um, but for most of us, you're just not going to have the cards every single week. Like the stars will align. I mean, I'll tell you right now, my lineup for super rare uh, champion is good. Is it good enough to win? Mm, I don't think so. Is it good enough to finish top 10? Absolutely. I mean, I've got uh, Bregman, Bo, Judge, J-Rod, and Chisholm. They're all four gamers. I'm going to use Logan Webb because I think he'll throw over six innings, probably have a pretty solid start, and, uh, and Ginkle because he's got four games against the Rockies. So is my team good enough to finish on the podium? Yeah, it is. Most weeks, is my team going to be good enough to, to finish on the podium? No, it's not. Uh, I just got a bit lucky, but there's going to be a ton of other guys with four gamers. It's not like I just have a, I have all the four gamers this week. You know, game week two is going to totally change things. I don't have any Cardinals. I, I do have Jazz. I don't have any Royals. I don't have any Guardians. I don't have any White Sox. 
So I'm basically going to run three gamers with jazz or I'm going to sell jazz because people are going to want to take advantage of that four gamer. And I'll be like, here's jazz Chisholm for 500 bucks. If you want him. Um, point being, you don't want to chase and it's okay if you don't win and you don't play every single one. Um, it's probably better. You don't chase. Um, Anyway, hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, Evo, you know, you got to pick your lane. So if you do well in all star and pro, that's your lane. You focus on that and you throw the other guys in AL and NL. You know, as soon as I made that decision that I was just going to focus on super rare pro, which happened game week three, because that's when the that's when they introduced ETH last year. But as soon as I made that decision that I was just going to focus there because I was spreading myself too thin, trying to make like all my rosters really good instead of making one really good and the other one's pretty good. Uh, as soon as I dialed in on that, though, I won game week three. So I was the first uh, super rare pro winner. I got that 800 bucks and I won a Ronald Acuna super rare, which obviously ended up winning me other cards. But I just tell people, stay in your lane, find your lane, stick in it. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Evo, we all learned. Um, we, it's not our fault. You know, those of us that played the postseason, it's not our fault. We bought uh, thinking that rewards were going to continue the way that they had been all season. And then after the wild card round, they rubbed us. And that wasn't fair. They at no point said anything about that. And then at the end, you didn't get any cash. So if you finished first in, in champion in the champion chase, you didn't get any cash. We didn't know that. So, but yeah, we got rugged on the rewards. What I, I mean, when I reached out, I think you guys know, I, I had reached out and I, I made a run. I, I tried to become the next so rare COO, uh, which I still have not hired anyone to do. Um, and part of that in my business plan to Nicholas was that the rewards need to be progressive, meaning break the season up into three. And as the season goes on, the cash rewards get bigger as the season moves on. And that way you're rewarding people for holding and continuing to play as opposed to that mass exodus that we typically get in July. And then in the postseason, you don't cut people. You still reward the cash and you still keep the rewards. So you need to manage your rewards throughout the season enough if you're so rare to make sure that you're still able to reward your people that are spending. But I mean, otherwise... We're all going to sell right before postseason. We're just going to be using each other as equi at, uh, exit liquidity because the guys and the new guys who don't understand, they're going to be the ones buying it, all the stuff from us because there's no reason. And I say this as a person who finished in second, I won two weeks during the postseason and I finished second place in super rare pro and super rare all-star still not worth it. So it, it just, it needs to be managed differently. So, you know, fool me once, uh, which was the first year and they did it. And then fool me twice last year. It's my fault, my fault. Um, but we won't make that mistake again. Hey, no problem, Ben. I hope you had a, hope you have a great evening. Good luck this season. Hopefully we'll see you uh, down the road. I don't know how many streams I'm going to be able to do in season uh, because I typically uh, there's a lot of streams that have much better content than I do. So um, I'm probably more fun than they are. Uh, but in terms of like meat and potatoes, they're, they're going to have better content than I will. So um, anyway, when we do streams, when we do game nights, hopefully you guys, uh, what I try to do with these things is I just try to, I want you guys to have fun. Like I think the so rare MLB community is so cool 
and it's such a great group of people and it's so positive that uh, I'd love to see so rare do so much more. And, and that's why in, uh, in January, that's why I did that home run derby. I was like, Hey, let's go. Like, let's get people excited. Let's, you know, baseball's coming. And, and that's why we did trivia a couple weeks ago. And that's why we did the game night tonight. Like, you know, these are things that, that should be happening and, and that the community deserves. Like we should do watch nights where, you know, we, somebody illegally streams a, a baseball game in the discord. Like, you know, those should be things like I can't do it on Twitch and YouTube, obviously, because they just get shut down. But those should be things that that we can do that are totally fun. So, um, I mean, I can do it in my discord, but it's not the same. And obviously, I'm not paid by so rare. Like the cards I give out tonight, I buy them with my own money. Yeah. And I that's the way I've always done it, because I feel like the community deserves something like that. And I I'm fortunate enough to be in a financial situation where I I'm able to do those things. Um, should so rare be doing them? Yeah, absolutely. And and don't get me wrong. John gave away uh, two tickets when we did trivia night and that was awesome. That was huge. And we totally appreciate that. Um, but I'm the one spending four hours prepping, creating PowerPoints and buying the cards and, um, and I'm doing it because we as a community deserve those things. So why not? Somebody has got to do it. Somebody has got to step up. Um, it's not like I'm running like we're making money, like I'm making money on YouTube, uh, you know, with uh, 20 viewers. <laughs> so anyway, um, dang, Evo, check you out flipping. Nice job, man. Um, I'm terrible at flipping. So I'm really good at holding. I'm really bad at flipping. I bought some cards to flip, and I think I just priced them too high. Um yeah, Evo, the collection bonus last year. I mean, you know, I had a talk with Everett in December. Uh, and he let me know, like, hey, I knew you want to be the COO. I'm I'm managing everything right now. And and we had a conversation. And I told him, you have so many easy W's, so many. And this community is so awesome. And they're so forgiving and so patient. Give them some of these W's. The fact that you guys totally miffed collection score last year and then basically shelved it was wrong. There's no reason like, and I get it. Like, you know, ever, ever makes so rare and that's great outside of, uh, it's, it's great. But when it comes to like understanding us as managers, there's a huge disconnect and, and I tried to impress upon him that there were so many easy W's and collection score was exactly the point I made. And I said, look, people will chase collection score all off season if it means something. But when you roll it out and you screwed it up and then you didn't just fix it and roll it back out a week later, you just shelved it. It's not right. You know, the community deserves better than that. So, and I mean, let's be honest the same team that's running so rare MLB is the same team that ran so rare NBA. So, and most of us are very aware of the issues that NBA had and is having, and it's the same team and they're doing some of the same things, but you know, with collection score now, you know, we, we have to keep in mind that so much of the utility is now based in season with this new model. I played rainmakers. I don't know if you guys have before, but I played rainmakers. I was very successful on DraftKings. And we're moving to that Rainmakers model, but there's still a lot of so rare habits and, and they don't really work well together. If you want to not only run a successful business, but you also want your players to have an opportunity to play and, and to win, they're, they're just not quite there yet. Um, I think that you guys will hear me say this. I, I never want to, uh, I never want to criticize effort. Because I, I think when they do do things, like I, I made the comment about Morosi earlier, um, I don't want to criticize the effort there. I just feel like sometimes when they're lazy, uh, like Morosi, I feel like that was probably really lazy on their part. Um, I'm going to say something because, you know, they should have got Chris Rose. They should have paid for Chris Rose. They should have paid for John Boy. 
they should have paid for for one of those guys. I'm not a huge fan of John Boy, but if you're going to pay a guy who's going to drive traffic, the dude drives traffic. And there's there's other influencers out there. Um, and Morosi is not well liked by baseball fans. Not that people dislike him. He's just kind of like, eh. Um, it's like getting Heyman. They're like, oh, okay. You know, if Heyman tweets something, are you going to go buy it? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, there's just nobody who's going to. Um, same thing with Morosi. So, you know, Morosi, if Morosi is doing like a live cam and hanging out with you guys, like most of you guys are going to leave after 10 minutes. You're like, okay, got it. It's just, he's not that fun. Um, he's not going to move the needle. So, um, so anyway. I don't want to criticize effort. Um, and I think when, when Everett and I had that conversation, circling back around, um, Everett said the collection score would be imminent. It was coming in the next day or so. And that was in December. And obviously we know it didn't. Uh, the reality of it is collection score really isn't going to matter as much anymore because everything is based so much in season. Like you got to get the collection score ASAP. That's why my Rangers is limited or four and my Rares are 5% right now because that's how you have to take advantage of the system. Um, but after this, after the season, you're like, okay, now all my in-season cards are classic cards. So the utility drops substantially on them. And I would not be surprised if eventually we start seeing full in-season card contests. So I, I know, you know, we only had one full season at MLB. So for them to kind of rug it the way they did, I just, I wasn't real happy about that, but um, most of the utility is going to be in season. We all know that now. So we're playing with a different set of rules and that's okay. I think it's a, it's a better set of rules. They just need to roll out more cards. So the, uh, the onboarding is a little more reasonable for people who actually want to play and want to win money. Um, Evo, I would love to see them get, NFL and NHL, I think that'd be great. I don't know how scoring will work for NHL. I've heard uh, – I'm not a big hockey fan, but I've heard that, like, fantasy hockey is super hard, so they probably have to set it up like NBA. Um, I don't like the NBA setup. That's just me. But I do not like the NBA setup. Uh, I hate having to chase L10s. I just hate it. So even though I was really successful the first year – I was like, I can't make the time commitment. I don't actually like NBA that much. And I love the NFL. But I'll tell you right now, they couldn't make the NFL. And the reason why is because there's no way they compete with DraftKings. There's just no way. DraftKings gives away DraftKings gives away a million dollars a week in Rainmakers. And they don't have enough of an international following. Because keep in mind, so Rare is now using the Rainmakers model. So why are you going to play so rare NFL for a hell of a lot less money when it's only when the cards are mostly just one year utility, when you can play DraftKings and get a shot at a million bucks a week. So rare is just never going to get there. So, and, and DraftKings is a beast. So because of that, um, based on their old model, and I think the old model could have worked if they would have just phased it out. Like if your if your card just got older and they phased out, it it could have worked better, but um, it's not better than the DraftKings model. But it, it would have been an alternative to just rugging what we had. Um, ba -ba -ba. One last question. Yeah, of course, Ben. I'm clearly I am not going to shut up. Um, hey, Evo. I hope you have a great evening. Thanks for jumping in. Good luck this uh, this weekend. And the season. Uh, when I'm getting started, am I better off paying up for this year's card so I don't have comps? No, 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 no. The the best the best thing you can do. I was joking around with some people earlier, and I was like, "Look, the best thing you can probably do is just play common and buy Bitcoin or Solana. Like that's the best thing you can do right now. If you want to pay, just wait. We're gonna have 900 rewards dropped." On Monday, we're going to have 900 rewards dropped on Friday. Uh, even though they've been slow minting, they can't slow mint rewards. 
So we're going to start seeing this influx of rewards. And a lot of people are going to win rewards that are going to want to dump them. You know, somebody's going to win limited and they're not going to have interest in playing champion and they're not going to try to win all six to be able to play after week 10. They're going to start dumping them and taking most so rare managers are in the red. So they are going to sell what they can to recoup. Because keep in mind, we were sold on this like legacy game that we were going to have to be, a, be able to play these cards forever. And, um, so we paid a premium for that. But I would wait. I would, and, and I understand less people are playing right now, so you have more opportunity to win. But the if you spend $1,000 to put together a limited team and you win 50, you have a good week and win 50, it's only going to get harder from there. It's better to just wait it out for two or three weeks and then that same limited team you can spend like 400 bucks on. Um, so good question, Ben. Um, is it better to get a worse team for this year or a better team for, for last year, um, for previous season? So I think that the most important thing is you need to figure out what you're trying to accomplish. Like, are you trying to just like buy some cards and have fun? Or are you trying to win some money or at least like break even? Um, because realistically, like you can buy a team right now for a hundred bucks and play in the classic competitions. Only 3% uh, of people competing in classic are going to win tier three and above though. So it's going to be really hard, but it's only a hundred bucks. If you want to win money and that kind of like get your juices flowing, then I would say you're, you're going to need to have worse cards. You're going to kind of play that value game. So the Dalton Bar shows of the world, the Alex Verdugos, the, uh, the Tovars, you know, just to mention some guys that we've talked about tonight, you know, Rice Hopkins, Hoskins. Um, those are the guys you're going to be chasing who are going to kind of be those like more value plays. Uh, but if you're going to go that way, like I think the Cubs are a great stack uh, with, uh, Horner and Bellinger and Swanson and Morrell and Hap and Suzuki. Like you have a really nice stack right there that you can probably get right now for around a hundred bucks. And it's not going to win every week, but it'll pay for itself. Like if we could play more than one team right now, I would buy a Cub stack to play with my Ranger stack, but we can't. So, um, so that's, there's no incentive for me to buy more cards. Doesn't make any sense. Um, so I would say, look for those value plays. Um, use the community uh, if, if that's your goal. If your goal is just to like slow play it, you just want to have fun, then definitely buy the older cards because they're only going to drop down in price. Um, the newer cards are also only going to drop down in price, but they're still going to be at a premium. And the slower they roll these out, which means server essentially is losing more money by slow rolling these because they're losing utility. Uh, but the, the slower they roll them out, they're hoping that it, it holds up an artificial floor right now, which it's doing um, until rewards hit. And, and then it's, things are going to get a little interesting. Um, hopefully that helps you out. Um, you got to figure out like what direction you want to go. So, um, like my buddy who's playing, I was texting him today and he played pretty passively last year. But I said, look, you know, I actually told him a couple of weeks ago, I was like, sell all your cards, just sell them all and just start over from scratch. Um, and he said he sold most of them. He didn't get a lot of money for them, but, uh, but he has enough. I think he's going to play majors. Um, and I sent him the tutorial that I made for like drafting a common team. Cause I mean, he actually really knows baseball. Um, Played baseball, played in college, went to Florida, and uh, he understands it. He just, he's married, he has two kids, and he doesn't have a ton of time. So a lot of times he'll just like text me and be like, what do you think? And I'll, I'll give him some short answers. But I told him, I said, you know, there's no rush. Like prices are going to drop. So, you know, play what you can, draft a good common team. Maybe you win a few cards, sell those cards you win, and roll them into some old cards. Because for him, it just wants to play for fun. Um, okay, good. That helps out. Awesome. All right, guys. I think that's going to wrap it up. I know there, there's four of us. 
So me, Ben, and three other people who were just hanging out, uh, I appreciate you. I, if you play so rare, I hope that you have a great game week. I look forward to seeing your results. Make sure you, you hit me up on, on Twitter and let me know if I helped out or if I just destroyed your team. I, uh, I always love to hear from, uh, from everybody. But I uh, hope you guys have a great game week one and a fantastic opening day. That's going to do it for me. I'm, uh, let me, oh, I can't even sign out. Wait, no, just kidding. I can't sign out. There we go. Hey, it's me. Uh, anyway, hope you guys have a great evening. Good luck in uh, game week one. Always, oh, I forgot to say it. Um, you probably already clicked out, but if you're on Twitter, you can find me at So Rare Aces. If you're on Discord, I'm on Aced Out. So don't be afraid to hit me up at any point. I'm always around. Have a good evening.